And we're live. What up, world? It's Radioactive Podcast. It's your host, Ace Boogie. And guess what, guys? I got a special guest. Got special guests with us. Some legends. Some legends, guys. Can y'all introduce yourselves real quick? It's the arm. It's the it's the arm. It's a <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So individual names, individual names. Too crazy, man. So okay. what they know about. All right. Your boy right. Triple B. And yeah, an honor, no. honorary member Blackout ain't he ain't make it. He yeah. Make it tonight, man. God, no, Blackout. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, he had kid duties. Okay. But you know, we we'll let him slide, won't we'll let him slide. So, guys, how did y'all meet? Man, I met Triple B when I first got in 15 Five, man. Fresh out of high school. They were still in high school. They mm-hmm. was killing the club scene. And uh, you know, it's just we met right here on the east side. That's where I'm from. And I remember when we first met, we me and him like it was this whole it's a, north. It's a backstory to yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. First off, they were already rapping. Yeah, they already had a group. So, was you from? Are you from San Antonio? From the San Antonio East Side, Rigsby, Texas, man. That's so they I'm were from. already. So you, okay, you guys, tell me how y'all got started, okay, and then so he can incorporate how he came so in. T crazy, T crazy went to San Houston. He grew up on yeah. the East Side. Okay. I'm on the North East Side. Okay. On Ritterman, right? So, but I went to I went to MacArthur. Oh. So I had I was already rapping with my group. Yeah. And MacArthur, we were called vice versa. Okay. You know, so I was, what, I think 17 at the time. Yeah, we was out young. Know, club access days. SAHighSchoolParties.com. If anybody remember that, yeah, that's where we all got our starts, man. Hanag, we promoted for yeah. So at 14, I was already in the streets promoting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how we, that's how we got I knew it. of them already. Like, we would see them in the clubs. I never really went to the clubs, man. But, you know, when I would go see them, but I would hear about them. And it was, you know, this whole Northeast, East Side rivalry, man. And I remember first meeting them. And it was just like, it was something about Triple B that really clicked. Yeah. So it was really dope, you know, so. So it was beef at first. It wasn't really beef. beef. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing off limits, right? No, nah, ain't nothing off limits. Oh, yeah. y'all want to share it to y'all's pages now? Y'all can. Okay. Because like it's, okay. it's already live. All right, let's share it here. So let me tell you the story. So basically, I had got into it uh-huh. with some cats from the okay. East Side. Okay, yeah, right? okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was some, we fought. It was a big old fight. We got jumped up. It was a big thing, right? Mm-hmm. So all I see coming into my best friend Michi house he <laughs> music with me. He was part of Vice Versa. He did the beats. Uh-huh. I see two Negroes back there with they Sam boys, oh, Sam jackets on. I got this big afro and I'm so, just big, looking like Samoan dude. Yeah, uh-huh, you know uh-huh. I'm like, I walk in, I can curse on here, right? Yeah, 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 okay. for sure. So oh, I for sure. I said, who are these niggas? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Michi's like, man, chill out, chill yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, because we was working with Michi. So you had just got jumped, correct? And yeah, and then you went and you walk in and you see this. Later, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'm like, who these niggas? You right. you know Hell yeah. Like, it was some tension. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but we was recording. I wasn't tripping. I'm like, bro, oh, we finished the song, yeah. you know. It was too crazy in black guys, yeah. basically. Okay, okay. And they had already just got signed to 15 Five, yeah. which was Pharaoh and Killer Streets. Yeah. They had started the label. They we had were, no artists. They were the yeah, we were the first two, me and Black. Black and T were the first artists. Black is like, I know these, yeah. these dope ass dudes on the Northeast side. Yeah, like right. First, so they and co signed them. And co signed us. Yeah. And that's what they were doing over there. Yeah. Like getting some stuff, like putting a little package together to come show their on there. Uh-huh. So once they broke it down to me, I was like, oh, all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we just clicked from there. Yeah, it me was. And T Crazy didn't click like that. It anymore. wasn't at first, man. It was, Why? Why? Uh, it's just like, because, man, this, our personalities was a little different, bro. Like, being from the east side, man, I got this reputation of like being hard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just it's where when you're a product of your environment, you used to that. Mm-hmm. So when you step out of your when you step out of that realm, bro, you kind of gotta you gotta ease that tension a little bit. And like right. I said, it was this whole northeast versus east side stuff. It was childish, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody trying to be the kings of the club dance, and it was it was it was a little era that we went through, but. Over the years, man, like once we started forming with the group, like me and him really clicked. It was you know really I mean? awesome, like brotherhood stuff. Yeah, like, it was you man. Go, <clears throat> you go to battle with somebody, you know what I'm saying? We called the army because like we went through the trenches. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's for the people that's asking. That. Like, well, that's why we were labeled the army because when we first started in 15 five, it was just a lot of organized chaos. It was just a group of guys that wanted to make music. About 12 of us. And we would yeah. show up yeah. deep. And so remember, 15, five, so the difference between 15 five yeah, and the yeah. army. 15 five was originally the label that me and Black joined onto. It was just a bunch of dudes that wanted to come together to keep somebody's dream alive. Mm-hmm. And they found young dudes to kind of keep it going. So that's how me and Black came into the picture. Okay. So 15 five is the label. The army is the group. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So and we were called the army because I remember we did this show, mm-hmm. and uh, we walked in, and the promoters like. 
damn, man, y'all coming in here like an army. Like, literally, our first show at the Honeycomb downtown. I don't even know if that's spot's there. Yeah. But you remember that, right? Remember that. We walk in there, and he's that's like, he like, how, you know, he putting the wristbands on us. He's like, man, how many more is it of y'all? We like, man, we got like, we got like six more people yeah. coming in. So that's kind of how, like, we formed that night. We was like, well, that's the group name right there, the army. You know, so started from there, man. And that's the original backstory to 15 Five the Army. Yeah. Now, when you see us now, we just the army. You can drop the 15 Five. Really? You know what I mean? You can drop that. But why? Why, why is that? But people still, they still see us as the army. It's mm-hmm. something that we can never escape. But y'all, you know I mean? y'all, but. Oh no! In my eyes, y'all was known as Fifteen Five. It wasn't it's, the army. It's cool. Whatever you want to label it as. Fifteen Five was the label. Like Fifteen, it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole story to that. But Fifteen Five crumbled. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Due to greed. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh no! We'll, keep we'll, it real. We'll keep it real. We'll get to that too. Speak facts. We'll get to that. That's the yeah. We're keeping um, it real. Okay. I want to know what was the explain the grind that you guys had to go through when y'all finally got together. Y'all finally clicked up. You said you talked about the first show. Yeah. Give me the grind from after the first show on us. Yeah, I'm gonna speak briefly and I'm gonna let Trip take it. But okay, so after that first show, I remember we, you know, did that first show, got everything more organized. Okay, all the little they had a group called Vice Versa, mm-hmm. and Black was a group called Double Up. We dispersed those groups, came together with the army. That's okay. how it started. Mm-hmm. So all, you know, all, you know, you know everything. So we put this project together called A Soldier Dies Once. All the music they had, all the music me and Black was working on, it was like a compilation, mm-hmm. but it was labeled the Army. We were all one still, but you had separate styles. Mm-hmm. And uh, A Soldier Dies Once, Volume 1, man, was like, City, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I got to say this, man, like that project, like now we got all this digital stuff. Literally, when I recorded those songs, track recorders, bro. <laughs> No digital, nah, nothing. That's 15 years ago. That's oh, that was that was a minute ago. Like that, like I'm being real with you. Like when I know. think back on that, like I'm, I remember being in the studio with shout out to Young Sting, Southwood Entertainment. He was doing the beats, mm-hmm. and there was no computer. He's track recording everything. Yeah. So <laughs> like that was really a last of a dying era right there. So we was able to transition from that to the digital era. You know what I mean? So is, it's is that like, back when it, when when you recorded it a month? It was beeping beep. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that. That's yeah. the track recorder. Yeah, we was young, young niggas that didn't really have much. Didn't right from nothing. Mm-hmm. So studio time was forty dollars. Yeah, it was. Time was money, and you had to get in there and work, bro. Like, yeah, we dealt. We got like, time to play. Closet studios. Imagine what a closet studio was. Yeah, it was. You know what I'm saying? This is a couple piece, so you had to work with what you had. Mm-hmm. But we made it sound good. We and yeah. it was in the hustle, you know. But we so we so we were like we are the like the last era. Like, yeah, it was you know that, that transition. That, we that were, transition. Like, I could literally say we were the last. Started, bro. Mm-hmm. Started, like like we were, MySpace was popping. My you know what I mean? Popping, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and it's crazy because like like I. Some artists now, you know, the beauty of the internet is you can go back and look this stuff up, you know, but I feel like our only, the only dark cloud to what we was doing is we didn't put out enough content. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't really go back and look up the Army's video. We had a promo video that still did numbers. It just lets you know how hot the single was that Mm -hmm. we put out. And Wobble When She Walk was, right. did some monumental stuff, bro. Like, bro, look, this is the thing. Why that was a song right there. Wobble When She Walk, 2006. Videos in 2006. Wasn't, was grand. yeah, you like, for real. Yeah, that's not happening. Man, oh. It wasn't $200 a minute. Nah, that would have right. been a cold video, too. Out, that would have been over. Oh. Yeah, it would have been over. We would have, you know, like, we had labels calling. But, but we I, could keep it funky if you really want to on the. On um, the reason why we didn't get signed, we had six deals on the table. We ain't gotta talk about that. We could briefly we, speak on we it. Got that to was, talk about we, it. we had <laughs> we on. had I just wanna I just wanna go to our original grind real quick. I'll let you talk about that. So you spoke about our grind, right? Mm-hmm. So we put that compilation together. We were still doing hand to hand sales, bro. We would go we downtown. Oh yeah, kill. So it's and, it's, and, it's in the street. Ordered, in the street. Yeah, it's it's so it's facts, man. Like we would go downtown every day. Commerce on the Soya downtown selling right CDs. Like the original grind. That's how we built our fan base. You know what I mean? And like he said, when you talk about the units we sold, it's all there on paper. You can see it because every time you order, you get the the we numbers. Order about a thousand. We yeah. A and, a thousand, and we can I, I can honestly say, like, it. off the grind, I seen a Nike shoe box full of money, bro. Like, mm. you know what I mean? But keep in mind we were young. Yeah. yeah. 18, 17. So it's like you see that and you like it motivates you to want to go harder. Like mm-hmm. we wasn't at that point where we like, well, 
we want the money. We want the money. We was really we we were sold on what the dream was and what the goal was. But ultimately, that was the issue why the label crumbled. Hmm. You know what I mean? And like Trip saying, there this was the deals thing, on the table, man. This is the thing because I I own a business now, right? Right. I'm the yep. chief of my business. I run the business, right? But I used to be an Indian, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. For fifteen five, I yep. was the. I always have to say I was the head in here. Like yeah. I was next to the law until the yeah. chief. Uh-huh. And I would do we would do everything this dude told us to do. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you can only play your part. Yep. You can't lead. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it was so many wrong decisions that were made. Yeah. But you just try you gotta trust the chief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? I will yeah. say I, I was I was always the sore thumb because I would always speak out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, hence the name T Crazy. Like, I have that name for a reason. <laughs> like, I would the crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would speak. Crazy. Like, I would. And but, but for the betterment of the group, I was just like, you know what? I bought in on what we were doing. But I knew everything wasn't everything. But I felt it in my heart. You mm-hmm. know. But it's we like, all felt yeah. It. That's the thing. You know? So, what did y'all feel? What was it that y'all was feeling? What do you mean? We skip it all over because we gotta we gotta pan this out. We, okay. gotta, we gotta put this out. So basically, we, let me break it down for you, right? I'm ready. We talk about this. This is gonna be in our what we talk about backyard barbecue. Yeah. We tell our kids this story, and the ultimate yeah. goal of the story will be how loyalty, how you deal with loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know, loyalty, so. and you gotta watch out for the snake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's all life lessons, bro. Hold you back. When tell, well, tell the story. Yeah. Tell the story. Tell the story. Tell the story. Okay. So so basically, the grind was hitting the streets, mm-hmm. grinding every day. Yeah. We had jobs. We had, you know what I'm saying? We worked jobs during the day and we sold CDs all night. I was real fat then. I was three days. <laughs> <laughs> he was I was saying, but I was down there. I used to have chafed thighs. I used to have to walk with my thighs out. You know <laughs> that's, how, that's how hard. He's just, grinding. Yeah. He was grinding. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, it just started moving, man. It's like the power of thought and speaking things. Yeah. Just, listen, we were rapping about stuff we didn't have. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like every other rapper does. But the thing is, when you really believe in it, you rap it just the like power of the mind. Power of your Speaking words, those words, words man. Comes to fruition. And we used to rap about escalades on 26s. And Roll we that. Later, we on the same. I, we used to freak ourselves out and yeah. play back songs. And like, yo, you like, said yo, that and we did that. Color. It's the same. We need to just rapped about chains. We got yeah. chains. We rapped about jewelry. But it's like, that's the fool's gold side of the industry is what, mm-hmm. you know, but it was like for us, it meant something. Miss we we all right. came from nothing, bro. Like literally I could say we started from nothing to something, man. So it's like the grind that I'm gonna take it for, I just wanna say it. I just yeah, wanna yeah. put this in there, but the grind from the CDs going hand in hand to the CDs, okay, built that fan base, right? Had the number on the CDs. Had the number on the CDs. Like you out there really talking with the fans. It wasn't, this was before the internet. This was actually talking. Mm-hmm. Going out there, man, buy my CD, boom, boom, boom. Here's the number, call this. If you like this song, call the beat, request our song. That's how the snowball started. So we went, we had, I remember we got invited to do a step show at Clemens, right? And the beat was there. So we the that's beat is the is goal, the like of course, mm-hmm. you know, for the city, look, mm-hmm. you know, that yeah. station, that station. No, that's back then when you got that's the, the only way, way. That you, was you own, to get on. right? You, you own, yeah. So, you know, we did the step show, and like I said, you know, crazy, no, the city is San Antonio is a little big city. A lot of those kids that we sold CDs to were in there, so they see us on the flyer, and I mean that step show was packed, bro. Wait, wait, so y'all wasn't doing, y'all weren't doing like a school to school type of thing? Y'all that just, started later on. That's but because I remember seeing y'all. Okay, so the look. So, okay, okay. Sorry, yeah. Man. So that, we had to get on the radio. Had to. Had but said there was no payola. Nothing. There was no payola. Okay. Ham told us we had a meeting. He said y'all got to get the request. Get them numbers up. Get your numbers up. I said all right. That's when we yeah. We grind and grind and grind it. Bird season. Everybody knows about bird season. So we sold twenty thousand at least. Mm-hmm. All right. Bird season was made around in Wobble. We just. It just put it put it together, game, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It was like we made it around in wobble and sold, sold it. Killed it. Sure we put it on the front with hit single. Hit yeah, wobble. wobble. So look, this is how this is when I knew we were official, we right? So so we show up to Clemens, right? And uh, I I can't remember the dude's name who would book us for that show. He's like, uh, you know, y'all guys ready? We like, yeah, you know, we. He's like, uh, but you know, y'all kind of gotta go through the side. We like go through the side like literally we had to go through the side because these like we had fans like and i'm like 
we looking at each other like, damn, bro, like, <laughs> I think we own. You that know what I mean? That was the first taste of... That was the first taste for me. Mm -hmm. I know for him, too. But Trip already been popular. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So every... It's just your face card grows, and they like, oh, they start tying stuff together. Them the dudes that was in the club, they used to be dancing. They used to be doing promoting. So it's like, it's all the, the, the stars and the planets align, bro. Mm -hmm. I knew that's when we were on. We walking through the crowd, and I'm like, we couldn't even... We had to not walk through the auditorium. We had to walk through the side. So we get on stage, we kill the show. Once a while, we'll come on. These kids is singing word for word, bro. Mm -hmm. And the beats right in the front looking at us like, damn. Yeah, okay. That's when it was over right, was right there. Over. They The high school tours that you hear now, we started that, bro. Mm -hmm. 15 Five, the Army started <laughs> that. The, the high school pep rally, rally tours, too. we started that. And I just want to put that out there, bro. I'm going to toot my own horn. Like, this is my bro, man. Like, that's why I said ain't nothing off limits. Like, we've been a little bit too humble. Because hip hop is on that, that was and, and hip hop is the only genre where they like cash you out, bro. Like you old news, you know what I mean? But it's been a lot of cats coming up to me when I go out and they just like showing a lot of respect and love. That rejuvenated me. Mm -hmm. But from that show, that Clement Step show, the beat was sold. They was like, We need that song clean, send it to us Monday. We're gonna put it on Texas Beats. If it gets 98%, it can get on the regular airways. So they had Texas Beats way back then? Yeah, they did. But it wasn't wasn't popping. It wasn't really a big deal, you know what I mean? But when the wobble came on there, it was number one for man, weeks bro. Row, like, shake your money maker was I'm telling you, bro. Shake your money maker. Be in fourteen weeks in a row, bro. Yeah, Cadillac it Don. Played, it was getting played everywhere. It wasn't just San Antonio. Yeah, it yeah. was. We was getting paid in like the two, numbers, bro. Some cities. We Oklahoma. Had six, seven deals on the table, man. And Sony was the man. number one label that was trying to sign us, man. Like Sony was the most interested, and this is facts because. Ham from that station, I remember called our manager at the time and was like, yo, they took us to Chick-fil-A. I remember on 410 and it was like, yo, man, these labels is calling y'all. And it was like, man, when y'all blow up, don't forget about us. Like mm -hmm. that was the aura at the time. So it was like from there on, we like, man, let's just go all in. So, you know, then we start prepping our next project, you know, and it's just. Hey, but to be to be honest, the reason why those deals didn't get signed because it was some effort. Yeah, it was. It Who was your like, manager at the time? I don't want to put his name on. Oh, it, but like I said, it's on some effort, you know. What I'm mm -hmm. saying? But everyone knows if you know the history, you know what's got yeah, talking. It was about. like, I, I think, but we we used to have a manager named David Bean when okay. the she walked yeah. out. Right? Okay, he used to manage the Who. Okay, once the whole fifteen five empire crumbled twelve years later from the story we're talking about, we reached out, we man. Reached out to David Bean. We were still the army. Like, Curious, okay, like we used to sign with him. Maybe he would work with us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So he schooled us. Like, man, how y'all been? Y'all still doing it? <laughs> years later. Yeah. Okay. Facts, and he man. was like, well, I wish Black was here. He could manager. I'm not gonna say his name. We were like, what happened? What happened with the with the deals? And he told us what. Yeah. People was hollering at what he said. Every time I asked him for more music, I got music with one person on it. I thought y'all were a group. Everyone kept saying, why is there one person on it? Yeah. It was only him. Big who? Thanks, man. The, 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 the guy who's the manager. manager. The, what? The yeah. CEO this, this, five, this is big facts, man. Which was our chief that we loved yeah. and that was yeah. follow. You know yes. what I'm saying? We were 17, 18. He was about 22 at the time. So I, we know, well, we go through life. We over it now. We cross that bridge now. We used to be fair. It took me years to get over the shit. But we crossed it now. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, so was he that, taking the effort he was going on when I was night why when she walk was out when I was like 19, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm 33 now. It's 12 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that's done already. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, nah, we had deals on the table. Yeah, that was deals. Right? So was, was he was he doing y'all songs or he was doing his own songs, just taking y'all's clout? Yeah, he did. He you gotta him give first. him credit for that. He wrote he that song. Little, he had Cheap, right, obviously. but mm -hmm. but here's you know the thing. That, this but, is what me knowing what I know now. That that is called now we know it as metadata. That metadata wasn't right. That metadata. What is metadata? What is that? This is metadata, bro. It's like the birth certificate, Social Security. When you write a song, uh -huh. me and him write a song as the army. I put him on there as a performer. Get as a performer. He gets his piece. Right, for my verse, it's old money. Yeah. So 16, that song I takes off. Old money. It's not just the hook. The hook gets a bigger portion. Right. Right. The beat maker's getting 50. Right. Yes. Real. But it's supposed to trickle down. Yeah, it's supposed to trickle down. And it, on the Wildwood, obviously never did because I can look the song up now. I'm not even right. knowing there. That song made thousands of yeah, dollars. Yeah. Like, There's a story one time and now that we think about it, we were young and naive. We moved to Atlanta. Baby. We sold the CDs. 
was on the radio 14 weeks in a row. This can go on forever, right? So I'm gonna try to speed it up. Number one, 14 weeks in a row, did touched every high school, yeah. did every show. Gotta make a move, bro. Two times. We did mm-hmm. the first deep bass, got voted in, smashed that one. Yeah. Got voted in by the city on that one. Yeah. Like it was all votes. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like payolas or or who knows who. It was like back when you had to compete. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He was on, and it was like we were one of our we get no damn. Yeah. He'll come back. Oh well. To Atlanta, we need to yeah. move to Atlanta. Let's just move to Atlanta. So we all said, so, we move to Atlanta. I remember that. That's where it's at. We moved to Atlanta, bro. We was, we was like, it was like a frat house. It yeah, was it, was, it was, it was straight grind mode, it man. It was in the south side of Atlanta, Jonesboro South. We stayed on Yarmouth Street. You know, what I'm saying in a bed in, and uh, eight people, one three bedroom house. It was yeah, like straight like square foot. Really, like really, the, the real grind, the real grind. Air so, air I had three people in the match me, Michi, and the manager, him, Killer Streets, Brand, uh, Blackout, Random Alone Song, and Solo D in the, in the launch yeah. match. So, and going the, to Atlanta like humbled us and took us back to the original, to the grind. original grind, but we was used to that. Like, we had a fan base here, right? yeah, yeah, but it was, but we, we like, like, you know, like, right. You know, we over San Antonio, like, yeah, we think we come over here and meet an exec on that, yeah. yeah, so we would go to every party. Whatever, we can scrounge up, change, whatever. But see, this is where the kicker at. I'm trying to speed it up. We used to go to Atlanta 300. We mm-hmm. was out every Sunday. That's what initially got us to get on, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, to the next level. Right. Where we, everyone should have been straight, and that's where the, the ship sank, the ship sank basically, mm-hmm. that's what started, right? Okay. Atlanta 300, all the stars come through there. So we some broke niggas at that time. We yeah. out there, and we lived hard, bro. We working at Fresh Express packing lettuce for real or working at AJC doing the newspaper getting at the temp agency. Yeah. But the temp agency loved our story so much they kept us all together to make sure we worked the same hours. Every oh. So we would work all day. Everybody would put in seventy five dollars per check to pay the rent. Yeah. Food and all that. There's eight people, seventy five dollars each, every check we get paid every week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's making it work. We making yeah. it work. You know what I'm saying? Ramen noodles. We can cook ramen noodles 110 different ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, he <laughs> said we was we, 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 we was broke, but when we went out, you couldn't tell though, because boy, we came, we came in a shining like you know, and it was part of the whole plan, you know. Yeah. So what he's saying is like the Atlanta 300 was just like a, it was a little a night where all the artists come together in the city, and there was a the bowling alley area, then there was mm-hmm. a VIP area mm-hmm. like. We couldn't get to that VIP area. We would see them doors open, and it's like, and you see all, man, all, they you usher, see the, usher in there. the dream, the like dream. they in there. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so our manager got through one day. Okay, yeah. So, okay, how tell the story. How did you get him through? You gotta tell how he got, got, how he got through. So we, at the time, this was the Gucci Man time. Okay, the Gucci Man chain. You know, Debbie Waka Flocka before he was Waka Flocka. Hmm. We did a TV show out there. Yeah, his mama was, his mama. she was interested, we but it's. Gucci Man house, all that. So this is the Gucci Man. This is what, we took Gucci Man hustle because we were, we was like, man, Gucci Man's everywhere. Killing it, man. He's everywhere. We Killing like, it. He's supposed to do it. He's supposed to flood it like, that's how we really got on Gucci Man, right? So we're over there, we're down there. So we we would see, it was the chain era. Like everybody had the real chain, like the big old chains. Like mm-hmm. that's who was somebody, right? Mm-hmm. So we were like, we're gonna follow the nigga with the biggest chain. We see the nigga with a big old chain. We're gonna distract the bodyguard. Yeah, get in there. Blend, we just say the manager blend in, because all of us can't go in there. We gotta play our part. Yeah, we gotta stop. Hey, man, I, I, I ain't I ain't ain't making it in the door. Okay, that's for the VIP. All right, they open the door. They come I got, I got <laughs> yeah, I got the I got the big I got the big bouncer hands in my chest. Like yeah, I'm like, all right. Just y'all made it. <laughs> you know walk in. Uh-huh. We just out there sipping that one little drink. We Man, uh, 18, 20 something dollar drink. Mm-hmm. He's sipping and just letting the ice melt. Just uh, waiting an hour or two hours and come out. He got in though. We'll link up. Hey man, I met Shakespeare. I met such and such. I Shakespeare is the guy who wrote who uh who who worked with Destiny Child on her first project on their first project. Uh-huh. So that's who Shakespeare is. Nice girl, like he wrote, yeah, like, like he's a, he's a real hit maker. So okay. if anybody's curious about the whole ties with the blaming on the alcohol, this is the next part Golly, of the story. Y'all. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Fine. Like okay. we gotta we gotta tell it the right way, bro. <laughs> so you know the manager meets Shakespeare and the goal was now is all right, we blend in as writers now. We gotta be chameleons because, like he's you, you heard him mention like, Miss Dell. He's like, oh. so basically, out of that, he fell, and that's what he's on right. Camera. Like, and we gotta be writers. Start writing, get right, right. I'm gonna start writing because get, trying to be rappers. You right. you heard him mention Miss Dell. Like, I don't know if he's still like. We can call Miss Dell. Like, she'll pick up. She know who we are. But it's like 
It's a numbers game. It's a money game. So I remember doing, I remember we we pretty much auditioned for Miss Deb and she was impressed. We were the best group there, but she was just like, it's too much going on. You can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, it's on there, bro. It's too, she was like, it's too much going on. She's like, y'all are dope. Y'all are cool, but it's too much going on. Yeah. So what this, and here's another little side story. So keep in mind the whole theme, the army, right? Mm-hmm. So we had to actually chop some people off. Like, bro, like, you know, you, you just a hype man. We don't need you yeah, up there. It's too much of the distraction. Yeah. But in the midst of that, you said it was eight, right? Well, I mean, it, the army was everybody. And then everyone starts getting little egos. And said, well, I'm yeah. All things. So, so they're like, all right, cool. We're well, going to play the army. Right. Yeah. You be so this. I'm going to do my job. Right. Well, you you manage this and you do that. But the, okay. the people that are, that are artists, you're the army. You're the core. And that's how that worked. So, like you said, we had to be chameleons down there because us coming in trying to perform at a big group like that, it was too distracting. Mm-hmm. So, in the midst of that, the whole linking with Shakespeare, our manager, got, you know, got in with him. It's like, he going to send us beats, just write some beats. This was a recession, so, too, so this is 08, 09. This yeah, 09. It, was, it was crazy, bro, in Atlanta. So we had to leave, like a temp job. Center. We had to dip. You either got to be. This is an AJC at the time, the newspaper place. Like, we love y'all. We know y'all trying to do something. Either you got to come on as a full-time hire, which is we got to come in and work every day. Like, we couldn't get our schedule yeah. that we had. Basically, well, we just down there, moved down there working a regular job, mm-hmm. not having time to chase our dreams. They wanted a 12-hour day type of thing, right? So we were like... We can't have, he was like, what you going to do? And we're like, nah, we ain't going to do it. Yeah, so we we're had to go back home, yeah. get a job back home. It's more stable home. And you stay. We shoot you bread. Like who, who's staying? Hold on. The, the manager, manager stayed. Okay. okay. We didn't know about the effery going on at the time. We mm-hmm. just, and now we see the gold. And that's the thing. We did know about effery at the time. But now it's like, all these years have passed. We didn't spend all this time. Yeah, like, bro. The finish line is right here. That's right here. Man. We like it's at just, the mountaintop. You can ride, almost you climb up there, there, bro. That's just, you right. know what I'm saying? Keep what what happened? Right, so okay. long story short, man, he gets in. All of us go back to San Antonio. We relocate. You know, we switch the whole idea. Manager's still down there. He's still in the studio with Shakespeare, the he producer. Moves in with Shakespeare. They he move signs in. He signs with Shakespeare. What? They link, um, you know, the blame it on alcohol, bro. We had an artist named, nope, Brandon Malone song. They... He's the one who actually sung the hook. The, yeah, he sung the hook. The, the, the blaming on alcohol hook. So, did it sound the same? Y'all remember yeah, how it, it kind of sounded? Sound the, yeah, I mean, it's the same. It's, but it's Jamie Foxx's voice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But they do that song. Brandon Malone song demos it. They shop it. Oh, it just falls in Jamie Foxx's hands. It falls in T Pain's hands. That's how you got that record. Mm-hmm. So this is where a lot of writers to the record T-Pain bro, got his part. The, this is, everybody got their part. You yeah, know what I'm saying? This, but, and, and it's like, I got to clear it up because when we were in Atlanta, we were all writing. Like, you know, but our focus changed. We like, okay, the whole rapping thing is kind of not really working. So you put the singer to the forefront, demo these records. If you got a hit song, like, you got a hit song, we shoot it. Right. And we changed our whole focus. Mm-hmm. So what ended up happening, the Blame It On Alcohol, T-Pain, Jamie Foxx, they people picked it up and that's how the song came about. Now, I didn't have, wasn't in the studio when the song was wrote, but the song was a part of our label. Basically, we're you back know home, I mean? we get a call like, hey, they bought we the own. song, we own. So we like, cool, we you know, we, we good. Comes, hey, we got a Grammy, we got yeah. a Grammy coming. It's true, he got the Grammy. Mm-hmm. We were all supposed to have the Grammy because in the <laughs> beginning, we all signed contracts 215.5, only 14% each. Yeah. Other labels, so I need fourteen percent of that Playboy, but this is where the effort goes on, right? <laughs> speak on it, bro. Because we gotta speak on it. Yeah, you got to bro. tell the I'm truth, man. I mean, That's why I said I'm happy. Right. my life is good. Listen, right? bro, I'm good too. Man, I ain't worried about we're nothing, good. though. We over that hump, so I just want people. To know but but the truth gonna set you free, bro. Know me. Yeah, mm-hmm. we was the hottest people in the city for at least. <laughs> I say a good six year type. Run. It was a good run, bro. Good run, like bro. And then I run transition from rapping to taping over the club scene. So that you got to throw like another three years after look, that. The club scene. That was a whole different the grind scene, when we I came back. It was my idea. Mm-hmm. I said, bro, we could take this off. I went and got a little small loan from my homeboy, and I said, look, man, I'm gonna get this money. I'm gonna show us that like, well, we had we lived in a three uh, two story crib over on the northeast side. It was called the Bird House. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we lived off we lived off the club. Off the clubs, bro. Straight. We lived off the club, paying our rent, everybody had money, car, whatever we was doing, I think off the clubs, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? 
But anyway, while he was in L.A., mm -hmm. so if you look at the history of Lemon on Our Call, the song got tied up because of some legal issues between T Pain saying, I, 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 mm -hmm. and that's the dreams thing. So they're like, oh, I yep. my piece. Yep. Yep. But it wasn't tied up that long. He made us believe it was tied up for two years. There was no money coming, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what's going on. Right. Y'all San Antonio. Yeah. Blew through, blew through this whole bag, came back. We had yeah. almost 20K in the bank account at that yeah. time. And the bills paid. Everybody was Facts, paid. bro. All facts, man. with his plan. His plan starts, I need the card. I need the business. Fucks it up, bro. The card. And then it starts. Fucks up the everybody. plan, so, dog. What? And then Killick goes in, figures out something, and tells everybody. And then everybody say, you know what? Boom. And then I, well, basically, Everybody was like, you're the, basically, I was the heart of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They didn't want to leave me behind because they knew I would be the last quick because I was the first Indian, right? Mm -hmm. Until I found out he was on some nephery, when I seen it for myself, my face for myself, and I called everybody and said, man, I'm done. They said, man, we was waiting on you. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it happened, bro. That's like, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of trying to speed up the process, but the, the moral to the story is, bro, it's really just boils down to being loyal. And that made a data, bro. Because if the made a data was right from the start, he'd still be seeing the check off at Wobble. I'd still be seeing the check. Blackout would still be seeing the check. So the business obviously wasn't right on that aspect, but we were young, we wasn't tripping. So with the whole blame it on the alcohol thing, that was a loyalty thing. Oh, he that didn't, was, and he didn't put that un, under 15. Yeah, he started a little he separate company. So it's DBA like, yeah, so it's That's like, Slugger Jones. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so he started his own little separate entity. So it's like, you know. So that that, that cuts us out, you know. So I mean when when the record came back, I wasn't expecting to see my name on there, but I'm like, yo, I didn't see 155 on there. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it is what it is. Like I said, bro, I already knew what it was from the jump. I'm just trying to be a loyalist, but I've been blinded by loyalty. So I'm like, I'm gonna ride the wheels to the to the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get what I can out of it, mm -hmm. get in where I fit in. So the next Transition to the story is 15 5 falters, boom. Fall to the wayside. Now you got the army, bro. Now you got me, triple B, and black. Like basically, we move out the bar house. Everybody yeah, every the girl house, which boom. is all of boom. our lives. Now we all married. <laughs> you see, you, 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 you see, the, you see the transition we talk about. You see this this pyramid we starting like. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we at this transition to our life, right? And we like, bro, we want to keep doing this music thing. Let's do it. And and in the midst of that, you know. I really have to say, after we left 155, we went through this period as the army, us three of us, where we were back to the hottest in the city, bro. Oh, yeah. Got to really well, say that. Loud. Yeah, okay, so that like, was the army. Yeah, that was, that army was us. So, you know, because we still had the clubs, so mm -hmm. we just, the transition wasn't even really an issue. It was just like letting people know, like, no, this is what we doing now. We start building a real yeah. identity to the Yeah, so we like, like, okay. It's the arm, yeah, it's, so it's we it's like, this is yeah, us. Yeah, that was you know, and we took our bird chains off, the 15 five chains, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, but I still I, got I, my I, chain, I, though. I, that shit's I, real. Like, real. like yeah, that shit's VBS diamonds. Like, I, I used to rap about that, so I'm like, no, I still got my chain, but yeah, I pull it out every now and then. He got, I ain't getting tat, but yeah. he got a tat. I still got my chain because I went through this period where I'm like, ah, oh, whatever with 15 five, but it's like a ghost, bro, I can't. We can't escape it. So I'm like, I got to embrace it now. And I got to tell the real facts because people was telling little side stories. I'm like, yeah. no, nah, bro, this is what happened. I, that was one of my you questions, know what I mean? too. Like, you know, what happened You hearing what happened, bro. I ain't got to lie about nothing. He ain't do no, no, no fuck shit. I ain't do no fuck shit. Like, I could look myself in the mirror, bro. bro. Yeah. Like, man, mm -hmm. I'm an Aquarius, bro. Yeah, so. This is who I am. I could look myself in the mirror and say, look, man, I've been a stand-up guy since the jump. You know what I mean? <laughs> If that's the case, what happened to the army? Then? Well, okay, that's so the next step. Okay. So the army, the trio, we put out probably two projects. We put out uh, MASH, Music and Straight Hustle, which is probably mm -hmm. my favorite project. MASH, uh, Show and Prove. But, okay, so after after Show and Prove, you know, and he not here, but he already know. We already hung out. We already spoke the truth. Like, Black just got the, you know, Black is who he is, bro. And Black's very talented individual. Me and Black grew up together. Mm -hmm. Like, literally grew up together. I was in kindergarten with this man. We was kids seeing it looking eye to eye. Like, that's some long history. So, <laughs> no. he says a line, like, it, it's kind of true. It's a corny line, but it's like, okay, I feel it. So, 
basically what I'm saying is Black is a very creative person. So he just was like, you know what? He needs to do his thing. And we like, go ahead, bro. Spread your wings and fly. And we thought we can keep it together, you know, with him doing this solo thing and us still trying to be the trio. But obviously it clashed. That's the real facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like when it was time to do what we wanted to do, we like, you know, when he's photo like, shoot. I can't, he can't make it. I'm like, bro, you ain't never missed no photo shoot. You love being on camera. Yeah. So it was just little things like that, bro. And I'm, like I said, I'm speaking big facts. These are nothing but truths. Black's a very talented individual. And he just wanted to do his own thing, spread his wings and fly. So mm -hmm. that didn't make y'all feel any type of way, though? It oh, did. No, it definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> like me and him bump heads for a minute. We bump yeah. heads for a couple months. I'm gonna be real with you. And like in the midst of that, me and Triple B got closer. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because we life already close at that Yeah, time, but, but it's just, just grew, grew. the transition was yeah. like, well, whatever, man. We do it. We we the duo now. So we we put out a duo project, and you know what I mean. It was the transition wasn't bad. It's just what what I didn't like about us going from a trio to a duo is. We got our shows. Like, we would go support Black and his shows, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, we cheering him on. When he come to our shows, it's just like, you want to tell this nigga to get on stage with yeah. you, but it's like, I stick to the rules, bro. Yeah. Like, we a duo, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you but, I, you know, I would see Black, like, looking at us like he want to get up there with us, but it's, you know, that transition from the trio to the duo. But I will say you know, that. 155 like mess everybody here. Yeah, bro, it's like a bad breakup, we was kids man. When we first started, yeah. I was 17 when I first joined 15. Yeah. So they gave y'all trust issues. Man, Definitely. Man, what? <laughs> Definitely. Bro, that's why everybody and ultimately that's why everybody, I mean everybody's they yeah. do their own thing, but everybody's is, is successful in what they're yeah. doing. Everybody's doing their own thing. Everyone's doing their own thing and they're successful. And it's like that shows something. So yeah. all that grind. When I, the way I look at all that grind kind of molded it, it us, molded, man. It molded me as yeah. a man. Because I was a boy. Because started, it's you know, like, you know what I'm saying? because the music dream didn't happen, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But that worth ethic, bro, it's you easy. cannot fake that. I'm talking about going from being the hottest artist in your city, going to a new city, and you nobodies. Mm -hmm. And going then back to the like, man, used to hang with us. So, what you like? Man, we, like yeah. we really, yeah, yeah bro. Like did our shirts for us everything, bro. Shine, like, we went to, met Gucci Man. We went to Gucci Man's house. We recorded with Zaytoven. Like these, these are these are stories people don't really know. We don't speak on them because we've mm -hmm. been too humble about it. Yeah. I don't know. Bro, we it's recorded with Zaytoven. Zaytoven has a record with us that he ain't gonna we never release. But we just was nobody, so he ain't give a shit about us. Like Rock, you know, Blair Rock, Rock came through, and so it's like that experience molded me. So when we came back home, we like okay, we know what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna keep it funky. They told me we weren't rocking with us. He, he wasn't, wasn't bro. Trap. He wasn't. We want that trap. trap. Our music was, was different. Popping. Our music was different. He like was we in the studio recording, he on his phone. Oh, you done recording? No, no I, I got mad. Like I told you, I'm the sore thumb in everybody's side. Mm -hmm. And they physically saw me getting upset. And I'm like, I'm recording. I'm like, I said that. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm done recording. He's not looking at us. But you know what? That's how the game goes. If you know bodies, you know bodies. But we recording in the same studio that Gucci man, the boot, he just he just got through coming out oh, of. Truck, like, like, literally, bro. Like, it was a popularity contest. Basically. It pretty much was. If you're nobody, you're nobody. That's We've met, you know. It's a popularity yeah, it's yeah. Like so, no, oh, he was the hottest like, in the game. That was OJ the Juice Man time. He was. They flooded OJ the Juice Man in Atlanta, bro. He was the. He was the man. Yeah. So when we come back <laughs> to San Antonio, we like we need to mimic that grind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But came back and killed it. We dog. came back matching. Dog. Was when the we yeah. Back and people it. thought it was corny, but it's like. Don't listen, y'all ain't even on this. Don't even trip. Mm -hmm. Just watch our new set when we perform. We, we took perform, everything. So we took everything that we learned from Atlanta and came back and just we exposed it here. Everybody wasn't hip to it, bro. And 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 my next transition I would like to say is like I said, man, rap music is the only genre where you get shut out the door, dog. You know what I mean? They shut you out because you old, you ain't popping right now. It ain't about what you did, it's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But it's like, we got some real stories, bro. We got some gems and some jewels we can drop, like real knowledge. This man has the knowledge to be an a &R. I got the knowledge, even Blackout. We know how to scout talent, bro. So it's, it's not an issue. So everything that we went through was a learning lesson. For me, it was a learning lesson. 
turn me into a beast of a businessman with this music now. Like, bro, you can't pull the wolves over my eyes now. Dog. Right. That ain't happening. Why y'all just didn't start your own label? Well, we did. The Army Entertainment. We started that, you know what I mean? And that's still a functioning yeah, this is a thing, entity. Man, this is the plan, right? Because we're well, 33 years old. Yeah. Still young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in hip hop, you old when you're you in old, your 30s. But, but that's okay, because all the knowledge we got, I ain't trying oh, to be an artist, bro. I got no. a wife, I got two kids, I got a business, right. I got 10 employees, bro. Mm. I'm, I ain't trying to be an artist. That's right. what's up my brand, yeah. my business. But right. me, He's I'm a hit maker, bro. I'm claiming maker. it, dog. Yeah. I can write some dope music. Not just rap music either. So, I, like I said, I'm not being humble no more because I've been humble too long and I've showed everybody love. And it's like, you still go through this process where, okay, you from San Antonio, cool, fine. Like, I don't even focus on that. We've been places, bro. I don't worry about the city, not to that aspect. And if people want to take out of context what I'm saying, I'm not worried about San Antonio to that aspect. But any other artist, if you're doing your thing, I'm going to show you love. If the love is mutual, I'm going to rock with you. But put out a single in March, DJs ain't rocking with it. It's cool. You don't have to rock with it. You know what? We're going to go to Dallas. And you know what we did in Dallas? Got DJs playing a record in Dallas. So it's like, bro, that's just another step. We've been there, done that. So that's why I said we... We can go to, if I wanted to, if I want to build my resume, I can go to Dev Jam and work for Dev Jam as a intern in A&R. And I can say, you know what? We can try to find y'all somebody that's a hit maker, or I can just slip in the studio on downtime and we can try to write a hit. Mm-hmm. Oh, the music industry, we had to learn the business side of it. Mm-hmm. It was all fun and games for us at first. So Be much, real with you, bro. So much fun. <laughs> Pop bottles. I done drunk Everybody. Patron. When Patron was first out, no, I can't even smell tequila no more because we drunk tequila every day. I didn't drunk pop crystal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like full of, oh, it, full of it. I'm just, you know, these are things nobody know because we just choose not to say nothing because it's a young man's game versus an old man's game. You know what I mean? Like, I remember mean, we went to Fitzgerald's, man, Triple B. We went to Show Love. We like to pop in little spots and be a little fly on the wall and watch the new talent. And we saw the separation in our city, like, you got the older artists, which we're in that group, and you got the newer artists. And I told Trip, I said, man, let's go over there and let's go meet these dudes, man. Yeah. Like, we're, we ain't got to, everybody ain't got to have their chest out, bro. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And we went over there and met these young dudes. And we had to refresh them who we was. They're like, oh, you know, I don't really know who we are. Oh, oh we know. OG. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, damn, they calling us OGs. <laughs> but, but y'all are, though. Y'all understand. We think, you about, you think back to Wobble when she walked. Like, yeah, y'all said so it was a minute ago, bro. bro. That's, that's a long minute ago. It's a minute ago. Like, time is that's moving. That's a long time. You know what I mean? So, and it's, it's like our original plan is, bro, like, as much as I want to leave this music, I can't. Mm-hmm. I told myself 2019, I'm going to not do music no more. Like, seriously, but I'm going to still write music for other artists. And I ended up writing a dope record that people like, bro. Which Enough to writing? Go Around. What song, what song was this? It's called Enough to Go Around. Okay. I put it out in March, bro. And it has 200. Oh, right doing numbers. Like, people gravitated to that record. They like it. So I'm like, okay, we've been there before. We know what this is. So that restarted what we already knew. And that kind of pushed me into the forefront again as being an artist. Well, look, you know? get back to that because we used to talk about it, right? Because when I I was a basically T never stopped doing music. Yeah, mm-hmm. I stopped. They send me, bro. I can't. But, like I, I want to do music. I love doing. Music. I just did a song two weeks ago with Yoda and Sosa. I okay. just happened to be in the studio, the studio for Ryan Hill's birthday. I just went over there just to you know he invited me out just to hang out because he know me, right? right. So, and then Sosa and then was like, "Yo, let's do a little record." I'm like, "Cool." And it felt so good, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It came but back naturally. Was, oh, it's natural. It was easy. Yeah. It was nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like bro? riding a bike, man. He's been doing it. He's been writing records. He's crazy. Been writing records. Been writing records. But we always had this thing, right? Because I, I started my landscape business. I'm like, bro, I'm, I got to get this. But we still young, you know what I'm saying? Like, we still young, you know what I'm saying? I may have to shave my face to look a little bit younger. younger. Yeah, uh-huh. But, you know what I'm saying? We still young. Like, we still got that look, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like. We just gotta get the bread. We know what to do with it. If we have the bread, we know what to do with it. We no longer trust people. We're not trying to go, yeah, hey, like, you wanna invest in those Nah, bro, we, 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 do we do it on our own. We do it on our own. We grown men, we hustle, we know how to get to the money. So once the record came, I said, damn, bro, how many spins you got? He did that on his own. So how many spins you got? I'm like, oh, that's a hit. Like, you gotta go. So now let's go. Started moving. Started moving. You and know. Like I told him, we wanna manage 
we want to get yeah. artists like we know the business we know the game but we want to be good chiefs we mm -hmm. want to be bad chiefs so we ain't pulled we ain't, we ain't started that yeah. yet until we're fully prepared and i and to i take on another nigga's right. dream and mm -hmm. trust because once we do that it's all popping like we're going full force so right now we're just pushing this record right and that's what we're yeah. doing because we know you know what i'm saying but t's been doing mostly everything right now yeah I'm so busy and that's i do and i do want to shout out uh DJ Cusifix, man. He out in Dallas right now. He was the one that discovered Yellow Beezy. He was in San Antonio about five, six years ago, but the city wasn't moving fast enough from him. He from St. Louis. Yeah. So he got the record. He gravitated to Texas it. That's yeah. Your, uh, and that's the little, right you know, that's the company they started. They really took off with the record. They like it. And I do want to shout out my mentor, Ertis, from Reserve Your Music. Another, he's from San Antonio, man. And it's, a, it's just people that have been watching us and they like, hit you up like you got something let's talk let's let's see what i could do for you but that comes with being real yes, and that's why i told you i've been humble to everybody bro i've always got the tab for being the asshole the stuck up the little dude that don't talk because i observe everything but i'm like now i've given off that energy if i get it back oh well if i don't it's cool i'm still gonna be who i am matter of fact when i saw you at fingers release party we started talking, started vibing. That's why we're doing this right now. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's exactly that's, that's the type of energy I think I attract. That's exactly. How. And that's and why me and him. Too, so he was giving out oh. good vibe, drunk and oh. all. And that's, <laughs> that's why me and him connect. Yeah. That's why we connect. Yeah. We did, bro, bro, we, yeah. we, we got have good talks. We just laugh yeah. and just have a good yeah. time. Yeah. But that was yeah. when, that's when I knew that I'm like, yo, me and this dude really connect because we had a moment like that way back in the day you know what i mean so all everything comes full circle bro yeah that was gonna ask you that I motivated him bro he he did it himself too though i know but i'm just saying he motivated me though a lot you know what i'm saying but when we was in atlanta like i said we was we was poor you know what i'm saying we bought a basketball goal from 12 for 12 dollars from the boat pickup trash man he picked up a basketball goal the basketball goal was the backboard was broken it was glass half of was broken right he was like i want this go go you know what i'm saying he's like he's like get you for twenty dollars Bro, we didn't have twenty dollars between eight people at that time. Bro. <laughs> Damn, we scrapped. Very humbling, dollars, bro. Mm -hmm. Very humbling. We bought that gold, put a little piece of board on there, nailed it in on the other side, uh -huh. and we hooped in that. Yeah, bro, we hooped in that every day, every day, bro. And I love me. I just started losing. Yeah, it, bro. word. Yeah, it was. Every day out there. It, it built our camaraderie. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It, it kept it's us eight, grounded. It four on four, man. Kept it's us easy. humble. So we, we, you we, know. speaking of that camaraderie, I want to ask y'all real quick. Who, who was a uh, who was a David Ruffin of the group? Man, David Ruffin of the group. Mm -hmm. I gotta be honest, and you know, I gotta say it's my brother Black, bro. Yeah. I have to. I told you ain't nothing off limits. Yeah. If he was here right now, he'd laugh. He's black. I love what, what black. was one of his diva moments? Uh one of Black's diva moments to me, bro, is when uh we was doing the transition, trying to keep the trio together and he doing the solo thing. Mm -hmm. We downtown doing a photo shoot, we didn't pay the photographer, mm -hmm. we fresh and fly. And I'm like, yo, we waiting on you to get here. And he's like, ah, oh, I can't make it. I said, I told. That's when he was in the red, and that's yeah, I told. I said, that's it. Black's done. Yeah. Like, you know, like we got into it. Like I'm like, bro, you done. You're not a member of the army no more. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's just been that we've we've had multiple situations like that until we just stopped fighting it, bro. We like you do your solo thing. You know, he was the first one to do a solo. I was next. Triple mm -hmm. B just put a single out. He's never done an album, but. Uh, doing that album for me is nothing, you know. And it's blackout had he's bitten by that same bug, the music bug. I told you yeah. we grew up together. How, how did y'all feel about when he came out with that song and it was on the radio? Uh we I'm supporting him. Yeah, I'm just so making no sure type of, it was no type of I'm, jealousy. But I no, not at all, bro. Okay. I'm just making sure he has his meta data right. That's right, it. right. right. I'm, that's what I'm on thing. now. Mm -hmm. Because 2019 is the first time that legally I've received any money from my music. Now when we was in fifty five, we would get cash, mm -hmm. but that ain't know that ain't business, bro. Like, right, cool, man, that's not business. That's what you call taking off top. That's not good business at all because your books is off if you do that. We do a show and we get paid cash. The books are off. No, it, it doesn't work that way. And we really had, yeah, it. bro, you're not really getting what you're entitled to. You're yeah. getting something off the top. You know what that reminds me of? You remember Ray? <laughs> How yeah. they was paying them cash? Yeah, like, that's not like some old school yeah. shit. Yeah. So it's like, these are things that we've learned and had to transition to. Mm -hmm. and, and like any artist that I meet, I'm like, man, get your music business right first. 
but it's hard to do because you get bro it's free to sign up and they give you the platform you got to take it from there you know what i mean so so what was everybody known for who was the party starter who was the the ladies man who was you know what was everybody known for uh i think triple b was the mascot because okay. he was the face, like yes. he, oh, he, he used to, yes. yeah, yeah. He, was, he, was. he had his backpack on, yeah. he had long hair, and he used yes. to look like yes. a Samoan. Blackout was the party starter, like you know, he was the one to get live. And mm-hmm. I, I was kind of like, he's a bodyguard, away. <laughs> no, but but I was a ladies' man, but but when I, I got another personality that come out, and it's like, man, it's when it's when that happened. When my shirt's off, it's lit. That's what we would say. Oh, t shirts oh, off. It's, off. It's, <laughs> <we lit. laughs> That's you know. It's, off, it's, over, it's over, bro. It's lit. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So but, anything uh, can happen, pretty much. Anything. <laughs> anything would happen. So, so we What's have the, a lot of fun. Uh-huh. We, we, we go ahead. Ask your question. What was the wildest, wildest situation that, that happened with y'all? Like oh, wherever y'all's at, Atlanta, I, here, San Antonio, wherever. I'm, I'm gonna say the wildest moment we had was we did the V Bash too, right? It's called the Beat Bash Brawl, man. And my wife to this day still says that I incited this riot. We're <laughs> oh, we're shit. in, we're performing at the Beat Bash number two, bro. And Is that the after party. The after party. That the, we threw. We threw. At Rio. And the that radio station chose to put their DJ there. He gets drunk. Um, they let all these other artists perform before us, and we being cool about it. But we looking at the clock, we like, bro, the club closed at this time. We ain't gonna be able to get on stage. So we shut all them other acts down, like we need to get on stage. The DJ's lit. He messes our music up. Oh on it wobble, bro. Oh on purpose. I'm on the last verse, so I'm ready to rap and my the music goes. I look at Triple B. I'm like, Triple B. I'm about to hit this dude, bro. <laughs> I turn around, like I'm talking to him like this, and I'm like, man, I put my head down and I'm look up. Triple B's already charging. Oh, so I charge charging him. the DJ. I'm at the uh, DJ booth and I say, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you cut that shit on purpose. And I just yeah, swung, bro. Oh. I don't know if I hit. I think I hit them. I don't know, bro. And it was a it was a raw, bro. Like everybody at the bottom started fighting. It was crazy. My brother was hit. Got the, uh, uh, <laughs> that was the wildest moment right oh, there. In the chokehold. Like. It was a brawl, bro. Like <laughs> the, <laughs> the club was tore up. Like, was, you can use it's on YouTube. You, it's you, meltdown at Rio, bash bro. meltdown or something. It was Club Rio it's back in the day. And it's Damn. like, bro, we the bouncers fighting us, like people from the VIP flinging bottles. It was it was crazy. So like, was it like y'all fans had y'all back or something? Or what happened? Man, everybody was, was trying to get out of there, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was really crazy because we Damn, tore man. that stage up, man. DJ, but DJ learned that day. <laughs> that was my dude. Yeah. Like I looked at him, I said, "Bro." Well, he was a beat DJ. He was. Ever since then, we was never right. Yeah, yeah. they tried. They 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 tried to blackball us, yeah. and they still do to this day. I'm gonna be honest because yeah. you know why? I sent my music to Texas Beats, and they won't play it. I'm keeping it real, bro. Man, I ain't. Man, I ain't I'm keeping it real. Like I ain't got a sugarcoat nothing, bro. Like, we're Damn. we're we're still kind of so secretly still people, being blackballed. It's still bro. people from at ninety eight point five. Still I think it's that. personal vendettas. That's a lot yeah. of people that so ain't that, there no be, more. It's got to be the people still got to be there. It's, it's some people that's probably still there that remember that because we didn't bite our tongues, bro. We kept it all the way real. Like, bro, you that's represent them. Like, I mean, like streets would go in there like. Yeah, we would boss hog them. Oh, boss hog. Yeah, like y'all need to play our music. Yeah, like it, it, it would. Yeah. Like, like you, we like, like we had to kick yeah. and scream sometimes, but it's like they probably don't want, they don't even want to deal with us no more. But I'm glad that Black's record is getting played. Yeah. Now I hope that the station is syndicated. That segment of the station is syndicated, and he's actually getting legitimate spins. That's it, bro. Yeah. When we back in the day when they were selling us, get your numbers up. They was talking about calls. It's a different game now, bro. You can go on. You can go on the website yeah, right now. Numbers. You can That's request. Right. Like, you can go. Re- yeah, you can. They want to see your numbers, and if you and when they tell you get your numbers up to get to the radio, they're actually they they consider all that stuff now. See, how okay. many fans you got? How many people can call in from what we see off your social media? So the numbers game have changed, bro. From when is, I is, remember, is the radio irrelevant now? Yes, it is. <laughs> the reason why I say that because if the the beauty of social media is if you can make a hot record and it can go viral almost, people are gonna share it. Um, you put well, it on Spotify. When you're around the whole when you're, yes, but when mm-hmm. you starting off small, 
and you no. want to create a buzz, radio is irrelevant, bro. So internet so I, radio is where it's at too. What about podcasts? Like how podcasts is where it's at? Yeah, you, definitely. It's, a, it's the bulk of it though. Okay. You, gotta, you can't just be on one podcast. You better be on. A, so you show your not face. Spread it out, right? right? But the be- the beauty of it in the music industry is you got to touch all these. Things. You can touch so yeah. many markets just hopping on different people's right. podcasts. Because we done told this story a million times. A million times, bro. On other podcasts. Yeah. But that, there's a lot of people ain't heard. And the story yep. and the story yep. ain't changed the story too. Ain't changed. It's, all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. It's actual facts. Yeah. So, I mean, podcasts are good. Everything's good, but now it's in it's in a, you got to have a whole a, a big quantity of like you got to have. A lot of views, you got a mm-hmm. lot yeah. of podcasts, and you got to keep track of all that. Yeah. Like, you should be logging all the stuff. That Everything you, you episode, do. Saving it. All, so it's like your resume now. Like, I'm yeah. going to touch all this because when you go start talking to these labels. That's what they want to know. What have you done? Let me see what you already had. What have you touched already? Right. Let's see where you at. Just like my, my, my daughter, his son, being all the HEB commercials, all that. Like, yeah. our kids are talented. So it's, yeah. it's all, it just all goes into life. And I, but you gotta have your resume. And I do. And I and I do want to say too. I do want to do another smooth transition. There has been a lot of artists that come up to me because now that I'm doing the music again, I'm back on the scene. I, I go out, and there's been artists that I know that have been inspired by what we've done. You know, particularly artist named Hostrom. Mm-hmm. I co-sign him. Mm-hmm. He's what was his name? Hostrom. Okay. Definitely has been inspired by the blueprint. That what we've done. There's been other artists that's come up to me and tell me that, but this particular guy, like I, and I'm like, bro, take the blueprint and run with it. It's there. You know, where did you, you meet him? Oh uh, man, met we met Hashan back in the day in the club when we was. I probably had my shirt off when I met him because <laughs> it was probably one of those moments. But mm-hmm. you know, he just would be in the club, and that's why I say like being genuine and real goes a long way. Because had I been an asshole to any of these artists, they wouldn't rock with me. Yeah, I yeah. kept a reputation as being a tough guy because that's just where I'm from. That's how you had to be. Mm-hmm. But this guy, after talking with him, he's like, you know, bro, y'all always being real, always being cool. And that goes a long way. That asshole, I said, everything comes back full circle. So it's like, it's a lot of, it's going to come back, bro. So how has branding with artists changed now? You know what I'm saying? From when y'all was back when y'all was doing it. Man, like you got the internet. You got to understand, bro. When 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 we when we started, when Wabo took off, it was a snap music era. Snap music is what that song is attributed to. Mm-hmm. Snap music we just started. We adapted. Like we were, we're chameleons, bro. We adapted. We said we need to make a snap song. Yeah. That, and Wabo, when she walked, was uh, road, to, uh, road to White Tees. The beat. Yeah, for real? That's what we wrote to. Wrote the hook to it. He said, so, I got the hook. Y'all look to this beat, write your verse to this beat, and we're going to make a beat to it. That's what it was. So it's like, so like now the transition with artists is, it's like, okay, we out of the snap music era. I feel like it's more of a, uh, how hard are you era now? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so you kind of, you, you, so they kind of building artists now, bro. Let's be honest with the, the whole 6 9 debacle, they built him. Yeah. That was a bunch of guys yeah, sitting artist, around bear, trying to clean their money up. They're like, man, we got this dude right here. We're going to put some makeup on you. We're going to put We're going to rainbow your hair and throw some tats on you. And you're going to represent us. Mm-hmm. And in the behind the scenes, we're going to clean our money up. But you see how that worked out for you, bro. It's not real. Mm-hmm. It's fabricated. Mm-hmm. It's not genuine. Like, we don't got to tell the story. But one thing about it, bro, like, I'm not going to break being a foe like that. Uh, hmm. I'm going to be genuine 100 from the jump. And I feel like that's another part of the reason why after the Army's transition, like, shit gets overlooked and lost in translation. Like, I'm not going to be out here rapping about no bow, bow, shoot him up, yep. bro. I didn't. Yep. See, I, I lived through that. I seen that. I'm not going to get on the record talking about that. Bro, I got a family. I'm not good. To, you're not trying to enter that. No, lane. sir. I don't entertain that not at like all, that. bro. Not like that. But I'll speak on it. I'll mm-hmm. drop some real records. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's the difference now. How the industry used to be to where it is now. They're like, uh, you it's know, music, it's, it's not. Trap music. It's trap music now. Who's killing the most niggas yeah. now and selling the most dope. You know, me not. So I ain't gonna rap about that. Never. So was Wobble y'all's biggest song? Biggest song. Yeah. To this day. Wobble. What? We did black and silver for Spurs. Yeah. Oh, like that was just more pro- commercial promo, yeah. but it, it did take off, and it, yeah, it like dollars. yeah, and that yeah, that's so that's like. Can, the, can y'all remember y'all's hardest verse I ever wrote? Oh uh, man, it's a song called "Never Knew." Spit I think it. that's my hardest I verse. 
Man, uh, let's see if I remember. Uh, I don't remember none of my friends. Uh, you don't remember none of them? Nope. Damn. <laughs> we could talk about real. We could talk about phone. Call it, man. Call it chick your girl, but she everybody. How he call itself your boy, but you really want to know when it come that a rise that he really down the road. Let me clear my throat. Mm-mm. Handle my business. Grown ass man getting caught up in the feelings. They really about to kill it. And they're really about the feelings when I get up in the grill like a motherfucking dentist. Mm. <laughs> and I'll okay. be working in the lab like a chemist. Man, scientist, I'm going to turn into a man. <laughs> Okay. I turn into okay. a villain. I never knew what life that could be so appealing, but when does all damn bullshit come with it? And I'm willing to give it all I got. Spit this crack like I hustled on the block. Yeah, I hustled on the block. I was selling hip hop for the 15 five. Had the birds on lock. Niggas gonna hate, but the chips gonna jock. Gotta represent, gotta make shit pop. Every verse I spit, guarantee this side. Every verse I flow, guarantee this high. And that won't change until the day that my heart be stopping. A casket drop. I'm gonna do this shit till all my niggas got bread. Represent that we all on top. <laughs> Are you sure boy. you can't remember nothing? I, 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 I just, what are you talking bro, about? I, you, I haven't been rapping, bro. I've been cutting grass. It's all repetition, bro. It's like a I'm treadmill, saying, dog. It's a treadmill. Have y'all have y'all y'all have any verses y'all look back on and be like, what? What was no, that? We, got a, we, we have a lot of gems in the vault. Yeah, I'm talking about some something that, that y'all look back and be like, what was I thinking? Like, like you know what I mean? Like you was you was you was child, you you feel like now it's childish. Or, yeah. or you might be embarrassed of uh, it. It's a lot of records like that we never put out because it's like we had a lot of songs where we we went through this real transition, bro, where it's like they was trying to push us to be pretty boys. OK, so we did a lot of like we had an artist <laughs> name. Right? Yeah, yeah, we did a lot of records with Mike Green and shout out to Mike Green, man. Dope oh, I remember, artist. I remember Mike Green, yeah. So what happened to him? He just, you know, the 15, five it, it, he, he got man. yeah, he, he got a part of that. He got did. caught up in that, man. You but you make it to a certain level, you see how grimy it is. It's going to change you, man. It's going to change you. Yeah. For the better or the worse, or it's going to make you hate this shit. Mm. And I hate and we it went through a phase where we hated That's it. Don't get it. Music, but I love it, though. I'm like the, I tell him, we joke about, I'm like, I'm like the dude who can't watch a basketball game because he was going to go to the league and he injured his knee. That's real. And then it's like, man, I can't watch these niggas play, man. Yeah. I should be there. Yeah. It's like, a little I'm resentment like, there, you know? I don't watch music videos. I just stick to working, bro. Like, I stick to working because I'm like, man, I'm going to get this money and buy my career because I know I'm dope. Yeah. With it. If I got some real bread, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I can just do the right moves like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Make some dope music and, and get out there. But now the music is at this point, I'd rather... Get the bread, get an artist that's on that shit. Yep. Just promote him. And promote him. Hey, um, what are some hidden hidden talents that people don't know about y'all? Uh man, i go ahead, Trip. Tell them which one of your hidden talents is, I mean, bro. I don't, I don't know. You know, I'll <laughs> tell you my hidden talent, I guess, man, is I, I can sing. Know. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can sing. That's one of my hidden talents. And yeah, I'm really, and I'm a no I'm a I tumbler. I can I, I can tumble backflips. I can play the drums. See, but you could have been a gymnast. I could have been a gymnast. Oh, do a backflip stand straight line. Any you day. Know, I used to. We used to put it in our sets at our shows. Like yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I was. I didn't did a couple. Yeah. I'm like I didn't did a couple backflips before. You know what I mean? He but still doing to this day. Yes, sir. Whoa. I just did one other day. Yeah, trips a renaissance like man. A renaissance yeah, he is. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. I can fix cars. Yeah, he, he's I can, uh I can get do internet stuff. I can do he a renaissance. I can man, talk bro. to anybody. Like I don't know, I'm just like an all around yep. I'm a people person. Like, where do you think that came from? Where you think that came from? Like man, to be honest, me and my wife talk about this. It's like my upbringing. It's real, it's on some deep stuff. We just okay. talk about it. But growing up without a real mother and a father, you kind of want to be accepted by everybody. Yeah. You just want to chase that love. So I used to just be funny and just love to talk to everybody because I want everybody to love me. And it kind of grew into like a talent. Like, I can talk to anybody. Well, what you do you mean your mom, your moms and pops? Yeah, my bad. Explain that to me, though. What do you mean by that? Your moms and pops wasn't around? Okay, so depression depression is real. Mental health is like something that's big. Now. Definitely, yeah, man. That nobody speaks on either. So You know what I'm saying? Yes. But, that that plagued my family for a minute. Can you turn that family a little bit more? It's hot, dude. Um, that plagued my family. It's hot. Yeah, it gets hot. But uh, that plagued my family. You know what I'm saying? Mental health and stuff like that. And uh, my dad was a typical, you know, drug addict. You know what I'm saying? It was never yeah. there. So I was raised by my grandma, and my aunt, but my my mom still stayed in the same neighborhood. But I was what? there by like twice a year. You know? Uh huh. So it's just like that's just how I felt as a kid. Just on some. So you life. were looking for love, pretty looking much. Love, pretty much. For seven, yep. So, I taught myself everything, you know what I'm saying? I was raised by, my aunt was 18 when I was three. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? So my aunt looked after me a lot, but she was young, she didn't know she was young. Yeah. yeah. And my grandma was a little Ford, 
a four ten Korean lady from Seoul, Korea. What? You know Wait, you got yeah. Asian in you? Yeah, I'm black. For what? What are you? Yeah, what? Is it black and what? Black Korean and German. Whoa. See, so my dad was an orphan, bro. My dad was dropped off in front of the church, bro, in a basket, bro, like the movies, bro. What? Yes. That's crazy. So I don't know who my real grandparents are from like blood. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But never met his foster parents. So that he has his own story. That's why it's like when you go yeah. through life and you learn stuff, it's like I don't fault him for his life. Mm-hmm. To me, he just wasn't strong enough to handle life. Right. Yeah. I've been shot in my face. You know what Ooh, I'm saying? What? <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I've been shot in his face. Shot? Shot. Yeah. You know, I, okay, we had what it. happened? What do you mean? I love it. I always have everybody back. I've never been a problem starter. Okay. But I will throw the first punch if you come messing with mine. You okay. know what I'm saying? But at that time, I was upset. It was young, dumb, we was, you know, club, like whatever, but I always had my friends back. So I'm coming back in the club mm-hmm. from walking my now wife to the car. This is what? We were just talking at the time. I think I was 22. It was 11 years ago. So I'm going back. My boy runs out the uh, the club. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, this dude talking about he's going to shoot me. Now that I think about it, I didn't catch all that. I just heard, oh, he's going to hurt me, whatever, whatever. My homeboy takes off running. I take off running behind him. Right. And dude, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, I'm down. It's yeah, I'm going. I'm uh-huh. there. You know what I'm saying? Running around the truck. Dude who shot me already got stuck one time. By one of my homeboys, right? I'm not gonna say who. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he didn't <laughs> knock him out. So. He didn't knock him out. We always joke about like, hey, you would have knocked him out. I would have never got shot. Had I punched him, he would have been out. I yeah. guarantee it. So basically, I ran. I saw I'm about to. We, it's on. It's on. Back then, yeah. I was wild. We was being like, reckless. That, because that's because of the way my life was. Yeah, like, we went. We went through the. We kind of mm-hmm. went through a reckless right. era right there. I'll, I'll admit it was reckless because it was more. Like, bro, I'm all about energies. You keep hearing me saying everything comes full circle. Stars and planets align. We went through this phase where we was like, nigga, we the hottest niggas in the city. Anybody yeah, test us, it's going down. We, 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 that energy we really didn't want that. But it was starting to get to that because we like, okay, everybody ain't showing love. So it's know. just like y'all said, y'all speak it we out. Spoke it. We, we spoke, spoke that it type of we energy. We went through that phase where we was like in the clubs, not really being cool guys no more. We were kind of being... Tough guys again, you know, chest stuck out. We in the club, we popping. Because it was people competing. Yeah, it's like I mean, we, we, we started to sense, like, we started oh, to sense more of the hate. Real. Yeah, they ain't really street. So we yeah. felt, and I remember walking around in the birdhouse said, I hope y'all niggas are, I was getting amped. Yeah, you spoke that, that you know. I said, I hope y'all ready. I said, I figured, I already know it's coming. Yeah, it went oh, down. Shit, you y'all know? be talking. Because that's always we mm-hmm. say, y'all better be ready to throw them ass because it's finna come. And it happened, bro. So it's like, it that you know, you. Okay, so how'd you shot? Oh, so anyway, come around the truck. It was a dude. So I see the guy we coming after. So I come to swing at him. He turned around and just boom, let it off. So when he went between your cheeks, it went in my face. Went in my right in the, the barrel was on my basically down there, touched my fat a circle burn around my chin right here. You can see like where it went in right there. Okay, it went in, but I was fatter at the time. So the doctor told me that's what saved me. Right? <laughs> it went in, traveled. It was a small caliper, so it went inside my cheek, traveled through the fat, hit my jawbone. Bounced out my cheek. And I had like a little cut right here. It hit my jawbone right here and it came out. What? Man, we went, to six, we went to six flags that next hole, day. Hole front, I had two holes in my face. Moral to the story is he here for a reason, man. Yeah. And so. We were so dumb. That's what I'm saying. We were so dumb. Like, I went to the doctor that cleaned it up. Next day, we was at Fiesta, Texas. Yeah. And then that Monday, we had Marguerite. We went back to the I club. Was bandage. It was you know? And just turned up. So. Just leaking. Leaking Marguerite. <laughs> <laughs> it was turned up, but young, dumb, not caring. Yeah. Now nothing. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like now we grown men. That's the beauty of life. Like, mm-hmm. bro, I can go back to that. Like, man, yeah. We was stupid as shit. All yeah. Had, but we had fun. Out. Now I won't trade it for nothing. But yeah. Now, like I'm a grown man. Yeah. I it it like, shaped us a little bit. Us. You know. So I, I wanted to ask because you have a little boy. Yeah. I you have some. a little girl. Yeah. What would y'all do if y'all kids started dating? How did, how does that work? Be like bad boy. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. You get that moment. No, but y'all kids are dating. How's that gonna they work? Actually, so like, not too far in age either. That's crazy. I mean, if you have a little boy, it's gonna be it's gonna be on your little boy. He's gonna yeah. be like, fuck you, little nigga. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, if our kids. Are yes, yeah. if y'all oh. kids. Talk about Ava and Isaac Jr. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We talked about that because we did, yeah. a lot of our friends, like my daughter's a little Beautiful little baby, mm-hmm. right? And all of our friends say, Oh, well, my son's married, Ava. Yeah. And then they be like, Nah, we already called it. It's like, <laughs> no, hell no. How does that make you feel like, Hell no. That got me fucked up. <laughs> oh, we joke about that. It's yeah. So but what would y'all do though? Like, 
that's that, that's weird. Me and my partner, you know, he has a son. I have a little girl. Yeah. They close to age too. They're yeah. like a week apart. So it was like, man, no, it's no way. It's no way. I don't yeah. know how I'm gonna feel about that. You know what I'm saying? That like, well, he was just. Of, of course, he know who his friend is, so he know his son gonna be raised right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just one of them things, I guess. But that's too funny, man. But you gotta think about this. You asked a question. I never thought about it. But you gotta think about like what goes on with you and your girl. Like mm-hmm. it don't matter. Is it? Man and a woman, it's hard to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, would y'all ever uh, come back together? All three of y'all? Um, I think it wouldn't be hard to do that, you know. Um, there was before, there was a lot of, I, I would like to say, there was kind of like egos and people feeling themselves at a mm-hmm. point in time, but it's like time heals all, bro. Yeah, first yeah it comes right back around we because. Yeah, we just hung out. Shit, BTK talk. did it. I'm pretty sure y'all can yeah. do it too. And yeah. see, and, and see the thing, and the beauty about that is with their situation, they know they got a bag waiting for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because they can hop back on tour, do that. Exactly. Like with us, if we do that, it's gonna be a whole different focus, bro. That's like we know back. what we got to do this time. Like no BS, bro. We know what we after. Would that be a start over grind? Like from the it it of the probably time? would because me and like I said, me and Trip, the army is a duo right now. Black is the honor, honorary member. I've I've coined that phrase because I was the one who kicked them out. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest, I did. You know what I mean? And Trip will tell you I did. I was a little upset. He but already went to the crazy uh, side. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but I mean, like like I've learned throughout what we've been telling you. Business is business. It is. And sometimes we want to overlook business, but it's like, oh, business is business. It's got to be structured right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I want to ask, how did y'all handle groupies back then? Oh man, shout out to our wives first of all, hey. man. But uh it was a time man. before y'all. Y'all don't be trying to have man, them sit on the couch. Man, it was a time man. before y'all. Right, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> the way we like honestly, we had this little rule called the gloves are off. Okay. And it was like, because there was <laughs> there was a lot of females that would want to deal with us and then want to deal with him. Like uh-huh. a lot of that went on, you know. Gloves are off. Yeah, and the gloves off. Some people couldn't handle it, I'm gonna be honest. You know so was, was there did y'all have a rule like look hey, yo, we can't smash the same girl. Oh, that's the gloves are off. That was the so gloves off. All, all bets are off. Anybody can do if whatever. she likes him, uh-huh. and you brought her in the house, the gloves are off. Oh, oh that's what the gloves are that's off. That's what it was. Girl. You're right. So we don't do that around. Like I said, <laughs> no, no like, like, I said ain't, like I said, ain't nothing <laughs> off limits. <laughs> yeah, that's how it would happen, bro. Oh, For real. But the gloves are off. You can't be no sensitive. Don't catch feelings for her. You know what I'm saying? So has anybody ever broke the rules? Yes. Yeah, a see, lot. That was part of, that the, was part you know, of the, the friction. The friction in the house. Like, cause people <laughs> y'all need a camera up in the house, man. It could have been some real. Man. Y'all could have made some money off of Yo, that. No, that was part of a lot of the issues, man. I'll be honest, man. Like, <laughs> so I call a lot of heat for it. I'm going to be real. I I wear my ring proudly now. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. I caught a lot of heat for it. Like, well, let me tell you something about groupies. Let me tell you something about groupies. Okay. Right? Speak on it, Trip. Now, <laughs> The people that are around us will have more groupy stories. Than yeah, people. yeah, like because a lot of people like, lived girl, off like, us, we man. Just like have fun, you know what I'm saying? But show love, take we pictures. Show love everybody, right? But, but mm-hmm. there's so many times people will come to me like, bro, like nowadays, mm-hmm. tell me stories nowadays, bro. You know the push I got from hanging with you niggas. Yeah. I, don't even I imagine used to say though. I was yeah. 15 five, yeah, I'm like, cause I'm right there sitting with you drunk. Right. So we would let everybody. He was like, so I'm like, yeah, I'm 15 five. He said, man, I got so much pussy. I've heard that story five, six times from five, six different yeah. people. Like, a lot because of people, they were man. sitting around us, they would capitalize on that. Ain't that some shit? You yeah. know what I mean? Having the best stories around. Yeah. Oh, we had the best stories. Best stories. Um. Okay, I want to switch it up a little bit. All right, All right, go ahead, man. So, is it okay to sacrifice your happiness for your children? I think, uh, yeah. Really? I'm so, If your children are your happiness. So you're saying that you would be with somebody that you are miserable with just for the happiness of your children? That. Yes. So, um, yeah. I have to say yes because I, my whole thing ever since I was young is I wanted a complete family because I, yeah. I didn't grow with my dad. So I think if that situation would have arised, I probably would have done it. But, you know, when your kids get older, you see a way out. You know, but I—I I mean, I love my kids to death, bro. So, so yeah. you would sacrifice your I happiness. Would ha- I would sacrifice all the way around, all the you? way. I sacrifice my my kids are my happiness. Like, yeah, I understand. If they're not happy, bro, that's what I'm saying. You understand? I was the I was a rapper because I like I was like I love rapping. Rap raised me. TV raised me. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a father in the house, right? So it's like I wanted. I I just told you about the story. Like I, I'm a people person because I always wanted people to love me. 
Mm-hmm. So I learned how to get people to love me, just being like I'm funny. I'm just care about other people now. Like I know how to talk to people, right? Mm-hmm. So I have my own family. Like I have, like I learned how people are evil, snakes. They're yes. so fraud and fake. I'm just trying to be real genuine mm-hmm. all the time. But now I know these are my kids. I don't like for my kids. It taught me where I don't need nobody else. I used to want everybody until I got my kids. Yeah. Like, shit, I got them. That's mm-hmm. it, bro. You good. I need nobody. Like I'm just and, and, happy. And outside of that, a small circle. That's it, man. Sorry. Yeah. So he's my friends, like because our kids kick it. Like we go yeah. to the house, we have dinner, or we just go hang out, barbecue, drink. Go. He got a studio at the crew. We might, you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. do something. That's rare for me to do that. But that was sacrifice y'all's happiness. Ugh. Yeah, man. That's but tough. I'm, but I'm happy. Though. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know what I mean? But it's just it's other ways you can, you can sacrifice. I mean, there's just ways you can't sacrifice, and it's okay. Like, I don't want to go to this cheerleading competition, but I'm going to sacrifice and go. I can deal with that. But, yeah. you know, there's other little things. I guess when you're saying Depending on, on what it is, you know. Like, what is it? Yeah. Like, if my wife cheated on me, I got to go. Yeah, so, so it don't matter. So the kids, the happiness so don't we, matter. So, that so we're talking about, yeah. like. So then it's, what does that mean? That means your happiness is more important? No, because then it's just like, why can, how can I? I don't know. Like, if this kid, I mean, it's really going to be happy because I'm right. walking around the house. Like, if you got tickets to the Super Bowl, you got tickets to the Super Bowl or take your kids to Disney, Disney World. That's how I look at it. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Which one you choosing? Now, if the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> any other team, uh, we're going to go to Disney World. Okay. That's my sacrifice for happiness. That's the, that's the way I put it. You know what I mean? Right. It's all circumstantial, man. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your thoughts on that, on that Fort Worth shooting? With the lady uh, who got shot through the window. Man, uh, oh, it's it's crazy. Like, I, I, I want to say this too, bro. Like, I do have a record called Survive where I, I spoke on some real truths. You know what I mean? And we we seeing what is going on. Like, mm-hmm. it's something you can't not turn a blind eye to. Like, black men, we're targets, bro. Let's just be honest here. We're targets. Well, this is a black woman. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, now that's the trickle down. Like, mm-hmm. they say black women are the most disrespected beings in the world. Yeah. Like, so, you see how much time she got? She gonna do two to five years. Well, and get I'm not talking about, about you're not talking about Boston John. Yes. About okay. So the new one is uh, a neighbor called the cops. Oh, that yeah. situation. Well, the door being okay. Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same thing. So you know she pointed a gun, right? Yeah. Who, but wait, wait. Who pointed the gun? They're saying she pointed. A gun. But now bro, saying something hold different? on. Wait a minute. The, the yes, she did. But it's, we in Texas, bro. You have every right to do that in your home. I'll tell you why, though. This is what the thing they were saying. Police officers in your yard with a flashlight, and not saying this is. He didn't the say it was a police. Right? If somebody's in my backyard with a flashlight, and they're not saying, "Hey, it's the police," you have every right. Police, I'm gonna pull my like, yeah. because because when you see his dash cam footage, he he walks by the front door. That was your moment to announce yourself Hello. right there. Yeah, yeah that's what you're supposed Knock to do. on the door. It's the police. They do that all the time, bro. So, so he's in the window. He see a gun pointing at him. That's why he shoots. That's why he shot. But, that's why he shot. Suppose but because the nephew said that. Yeah. But like I said, man, listen. I'm a lawful carrying citizen. She had every, every right to right. do that. So don't. Ma- they, they trying to make that as if, oh, that was his reaction to shooting. No, first of all, sir, you didn't announce yourself coming in her yard. There's a certain protocol cops have to do. Mm-hmm. They yell that. Police, you see it all the yeah. time, man. You know, so I, I thought you were talking about the other one, but it's the same thing, bro. They police are in a they have a license to kill. Right. And I'm gonna go deeper and further and say they have a license to kill us yeah. mm-hmm. because they see us as a threat. He wouldn't have did that in a white neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you did he y'all wouldn't. see that video of the white guy who chased after the yeah. white cops said, You're gonna I just die. seen another one. He's swinging the knife at him. He I just seen the another cop. one. The Listen, man. I just That's watched funny. another one where the guy gets out of his car with a gun and the cops like the one tread he fell? back. Like, I one where he fell. Yeah, that's the one. I see that. They running around and it's like it's it, it's do butt naked running around. He just killed two people. You know, and and and, cops and, and, and and people with our pigment get shot for less than that. Yeah. They get shot for reacting to go for they well, you know sitting there eating ice cream getting yeah. shot because we already nervous when we get pulled yeah. over so yeah we're a little fidgety and all that yeah and, and it's, it's uh, yeah, police get behind I ain't doing nothing wrong right you know what i'm saying yeah i'm, doing, I'm a business, I'm business owner now business owner. yeah <laughs> but you still have that fear owner, you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like but every time i get there i'm like yeah well, i'm nervous I ain't yeah yeah i'm good yeah but man it's scary yes indeed okay so <clears throat> if white folks wearing black faces is a problem mm-hmm. right if we, you know this is an issue right um, is people dressing up as women on Halloween is that offensive to transgenders? What do y'all think? Man, not to me. 
I, I think it's it's a fine line between all that. You yeah. know, if you want to talk about the whole blackface thing, that was meant to mock us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, that, that was that was meant to historical reference. That was yeah. meant to demean us and mock us. You know, and I I I gotta say this, this is my personal opinion. I find it very funny how. They like to degrade us, but they like to try be, be to be us, us. Got, you know? So it's almost one of them things where it's like, y'all aren't good, but uh, y'all okay for us to to mimic y'all or, or try to, they don't want to acknowledge our pure culture. They mm -hmm. want to demean our culture. Mm -hmm. Now the whole transgender thing and that, man, that's a real slippery slope because those people is fighting for their rights too. Well. But I don't think, don't think that you should attribute that to the whole civil rights thing. It is well, not, I'm not. Well, I'm saying. No, I'm just saying because yeah. that's what happens. Like, oh, okay. Don't they, compare they, the two. They feel like they they're mm -hmm. when they're unjustified on their rights, they kind of relate yeah, it to they that. Do. They you do. Know, you but know. Um, like I said, my question is, you know, is is or should that or can that be offensive to them? Being, you know, I think say, it some is men, offensive. Some men dress like women on Halloween. It's, just, it's, it's always been like that. It's how you take it. Yeah, everything. Everybody's system. You live in the sense of the so world. So I leads up to the following question: Are are our freedom of speech being taken away slowly but surely? Definitely, oh, absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. So, how far in the future do you think it's going to be when it's just completely just taken? Man, it has to. Yeah, what what like like, like six years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will give it about five to ten. Five to ten what happened? Yeah. See, what the the problem is? You got these people are who are still in power, that's empowering their next generation with their same beliefs. Mm -hmm. So even if this culture that dies off that people that are racist they still bringing up people that are no, still had the same the beliefs man the people, it's the families that one that were slave owners right and all that so it's like so they, they targeted to, to that generation they, they, this, you know it's the slave owners and all they trying to keep that targeted to that generation so now the younger kids the younger kids that believe in that they don't do the same thing once they get older yeah but i think that's gonna i mean what i think is it's gonna change as they get older. As the the real like racist, racist, racist people, will, I think it's gonna to start to die off eventually. Mm -hmm. But you still, you still got the you got the, the eighty year old, seventy year old people that are running there right now about to die. Yeah. So they're like, we finna hit the panic button. Yeah, right, they bro, bringing bro, up the next generation. If I let somebody yeah. have all this, and so they're gonna try and change everything before they go. Yeah. Would y'all rather get beat up in front of y'all kids or in front of y'all spouse? In front of my wife. In front of my wife. Yeah. I was going to get beat up. But we beat them up. But I was going to get up in front of my kids, bro. In front of my wife. We can talk about that. Yeah, we can talk about that. My kids. Right, right, right. My kids, my sons think I'm Superman, bro. Like, it's so Yeah. You ain't messing with my dad. I wouldn't even traumatize my kids like that, man. That's nope. funny. So y'all rather get beat up and put My wife, we can okay. talk about it, you yeah. know. Hey, you say nothing, babe. Strong, yep. babe. <laughs> I slipped on the rock. You saw me you slip saw on that rock. Have y'all ever told a lie in y'all raps? I mean, y'all said earlier y'all did. So. Uh, yeah. I lied. Money, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> we well, saw niggas lie. Was niggas lie. But man. we would always fly. We had a face card. Yeah, the okay. face car works for us. But yeah, I was, I was, I was talking about riding on candy paint ring. I ain't had none of that, bro. Yeah. But you know, you tell a little little white lie, you know. But I'll tell you right now, every rapper is on that. And yeah. if you're not on that, this is what I told my wife, right? Because she was like, "I'm gonna go back to some of your songs you said today." <laughs> Listen, if you really used to all that, I want to know how you used to live. Man, <laughs> said, she using his, her, she yeah, losing his lyrics against them. Everything yeah. I said was like right. Actually, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Really happens. Listen, bro. Like, you were a whore. Oh Listen, my gosh. <laughs> I said the music is like a is like an action movie, mm -hmm. right? Hip hop. It's like yeah. a movie without the visuals until you make a video. Right. That's why I said make a video. Man, yeah. bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you hear it, it's like you play it Listen, bro. Head. We had this song called I-10 Ballin', right? But the whole idea of the song was visioning what we were gonna do when we get it. We odds and ballers, steady shot in Texas, Ryan shotgun and Kenny Cody paid the last used to want to be a baller. Now I moved up to one other level. You can call me a shot caller. We didn't have no candy paid Lexus, but we saw ourselves doing that. So it's like you know, you just it's just something you envision. So it's like kind of speaking it into existence. So it's like Paco, but it's the thing. They grew up 
those Second Baptists. You seen niggas yeah. in the candy painted legs. Yeah. yeah. Moving yeah. the old door. So you see that. Yeah, it raised me he first. He live everything he's but sometimes right, it is what's going around. He said it's what I've seen, and that yeah. is the truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So baby, if I said something, I may have not done it, but it is the truth. The fact that someone I knew done it, right. I've seen it, mm-hmm. I've been around it, I was exposed to it in my life. It's the artist. It's the, it's honestly the artist storytelling, bro. It's the artist storytelling. Um, what's some things that y'all did as child, as children, which I probably already done said it, that could have ruined your lives as adults? Oh, oh man, uh, I'll I'll say this real quick, man. This is why we talking about me still being able to do music now. Music saved me, bro. Like music, performing arts, sports saved me because where I grew up at in the Rigsby, mm-hmm. man, I was one summer away from becoming somebody else different you know what i mean i was one summer away from not making it past 21 but my family members they would come get me take me what were some things you were doing though man i was just just being a product of your environment going right. outside at 12 and you you that adolescent age and then, then the the younger ogs coming to grab you like come here we're gonna go do this you know man i've been i've almost been involved in robbing a corner store before i was almost coerced into doing it by the older ogs because they like you know, y'all young, you know, y'all going there, y'all do mm-hmm. we y'all do what we tell y'all to do. Mm-hmm. That's just me being a product of my environment, but something in my heart, bro, I just I didn't do it. So that was something I think that would have changed my whole reality right there. Had I done that, yeah, you know, store. and I didn't do it. And it was like, oh, y'all weak. So I said, Man, y'all supposed to be the, the y'all supposed to be the little big homies. Why y'all won't do it? Hmm. And I got jumped. Oh, shit. My homeboy Jarris would tell you I, they jumped me for that because I spoke out, but I've always been that way. So that was something that. So when you young, when you little, what, man, I was like 14, 13 years and old. These old, bro. how old were they? They like 17, 18. They like they called the baby. They used to call them the oh, BGs. Okay. They was the baby gangsters. You had the OGs. Okay. But the little BGs would try to get us. We was the little OGs to get do stuff. And it's like, wait a little minute, little y'all yeah. supposed to be hard. Why y'all making us put in work? Mm-hmm. I said that. And then somebody punched me in the back of the head. (laughs) (laughs) But that's that's my story, bro. Like that just tells you where I've been and where I'm at now. So yeah, and music changed me, saved my life. I'm glad. I'm I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? Different. Different uh, different uh, different different uh, Different 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 Man, I just did. I don't know. Man. Really reckless. Come on, we got to think of one of these stories. One of these stories. I mean, I got shot. That's one. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, you probably already didn't say it. I mean, I used to fight a lot, bro. Yeah, because I was, I was angry. Like I smile, I know how to wear a smile, but I know how to. That sounds so that funny. Angry, how you right? be a people's person but fight a lot? No, because that's like I love people, but I know how people are. So I was like, I would go around and say, I wait for somebody. Like I would put it on myself. Like I hope somebody say something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, you, but and you, you want me to tell you what it was with him too? He always had a smile, okay. and that's why when I, I first met him, me. I thought he was soft. Was so I was so like, oh man, he uh, he's soft, you know what I mean? Bro, but, popular. Yeah. So I was doing parties yeah. at 14. That's what I, I remember. Competitions I was doing, I was winning. Y'all know Playboy Chase? He was like number yes. one. Yes, mm-hmm. Texas Finals, ain't Texas it? Texas Finals. Chase was number one. He yep. was eating it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We was in the era, like we was out there doing that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so I was always popular, but I hung around all these straight face. Mm-hmm. Like, they, yeah. put, they had all the hoes. All my homeboys had all the hoes and all that, but they was like, so niggas was mad. Yeah. But then so, like, we want to fight them niggas, but we're going to fight the big soft looking nigga with the smile. Yeah. But and Trip I, had hands, though. I had hands. Yeah. <laughs> I seen him. I, know. I seen him. I seen him drop some dude in club access. You know what I mean? Like, how, how I happened? was in there. What happened? How that, how it that was just a fight that popped off on the dance floor. Uh, I remember that one. I seen it. Tell, I'm tell like, it, yeah, please. That dude, I had. This dude kept looking at me, right? And I already know him. We already asked him. Okay, so let me tell you, the, let me tell you, this goes off of that story, all right? Okay. Because I fought two, three times a year ever since sixth grade, all the way up to Y'all met us. 27. No, we got our last fight in Victoria. Oh, we yeah, yeah. Seven years old, bro. A while ago. <laughs> all right, five years ago. All right, so anyway, we were 16. I was 16, and I went with my boy Mark to a party on the east side. Basically, all in a nutshell, there was some you know young kids. So I'm 16. This side, that side, this game, this game. Mm-hmm. You know a crib. It's the Bloods over here. They want to fight because they jumped the crib, and he said something about him jumping the crib. And they're like, "Oh, you told we jumped him, whatever, right?" So anyway, we get jumped on the east side. I got pistol whip. Oh, the boys is on J Street. I'm like, what was y'all doing on J Street, man? They jumped me and my boy, right? So I hear all these girls talking about, "Get off him! Get off him!" Right? And they ain't dropping me. I'll say that right now. I got pistol whip. Did not get dropped. So okay, okay. okay? Only reason why I got pissed with him now, I found out the story later because I knew people at the party told me what happened. 
The only reason why they got off me, dude, was shooting the gun. But it wouldn't go off and jam because then niggas had we young them niggas had a little throwaway, a little, you know, jammed up gun, ain't clean it, whatever. It jammed up, so he hit me. So that's one that 16. So I he was trying to shoot you? He was trying to kill me. He tried to kill me. You here for a real reason, bro. I got pistol with, you know what I'm saying? So basically we jumped in the car after that. We sped off, left from there, right? So now shout out to Mark, that man. Fight where I got with them. Yeah. That's, that was and that was the time. tension. It's and like, that's oh, that's the that's dude right, right the there. So that was the whole buildup. Like, you know. Okay. Dropped down from that seventeen because I was a senior. Oh, he for real wasn't fucking with them. You seen them? You was like, yeah, it was a little, it was a little tension. I made a whole freestyle mixtape called the Northeast Beats, and I was talking about how I whooped them niggas. Oh my god! I got jumped and I left niggas black and blue. I was putting the beats on. Mm-hmm. I had to get out of there. Nah, I, I, I heard about <laughs> it back at school. I, I heard about it back at school. Oh. Some chubby dude with some long braids, dress. I'm like, man. It sound like yep. the most soft northeast niggas whoop you. Like, like yeah. he was mad, right? So anyway, I seen one of them in the club. Mm-hmm. And I knew him. He used to be my homeboy. Mm-hmm. Some niggas are so fake. He used to be my homeboy switched up because he wanted to be a gangster now. I never claimed to be a gangster. I didn't have, I wasn't a blood, no crib, no nothing. I'm just me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he keep on mugging me, thinking I'm soft. So this is that night he's talking about, and I'm like, "Hey, bro, that nigga, that nigga keep on mugging me, bro." And I said, "If he looks at me one more time for more than three seconds, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm gonna ask so childish him. now, huh?" No, for real. That's why used to, we was we were chill. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. We had a high school party. Yeah, we had a high school party. I said he look at me for more than three seconds. I'm gonna ask him. Nigga, do you got a problem? Uh-huh. And if he say anything but no, I'm firing off. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> said, he dropped him, bro. He said, yeah, I'm nigga, saying I- it. <laughs> and it was playing. And it was playing Lil John. <laughs> what's wait, what's song? Push your hood up. Oh, push your hood up. I remember. Uh, I'm like, yo, it's time to go, man. So did, did that song have anything to do with? Or it was just it was gonna happen regardless. I'll it, tell you what. I'll tell you what song always started fights in the club. Which one? Nothing yeah, you but. What? Why? Yeah. Why? why? I don't know why. It's weird. And this is a song for the ladies. Like, yeah, it was. Why? It was like a club song. It just would be weird. Know, we would see that. I'm like, like, why they fight me? Why you fight to it? Why would you? Oh, <laughs> Joe's so volcano. Bad. I remember. Yeah. Joe, we, we was. I remember being in Joe's Volcano. They played the record. They, they fight. Fight they, they were fighting. Yeah, they were fighting. I'm like, like, the the club, like, like bro, like, is that? Did, did we like make a fight song or something? Hit the ties. Okay, so guys, explain to me why Texas sound is so much different now. How do we go from DJ Screw to Toby Noigwe or 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 uh, Travis Scott? You know what I'm saying? That's a huge difference. I mean, music changes. I mean, yeah. the internet lets you open your your ears to everything else. Right? Yeah. We had our, we used to have our own uniqueness. You yeah, know what we mean? did. And and I, I for one would say that we must keep appreciating our Texas sound because we're like the only state that got our own unique sound. The West I mean, Coast Louisiana does too. Does too and Louisiana, the West Coast. But I yeah. mean, Texas is so unique though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I think, like you said, the the internet has opened up everything. It was mm-hmm. just regional at first. That Texas sound, DJ Screw, you had to go to Houston to get his, mm-hmm. his music wasn't being distributed. Now you see... And it's so slow though. Yeah, I think the the world is just on such fast pace. Yeah, mm-hmm. even the Texas flow is is the classic flow. It's, it's a little slow. played it's out. Like, it's too it's kind of played out. I didn't came no, down. It's a, listen, bro. <laughs> the world is fast now. Fast, yeah. Bro. No, yeah. they say if you if you don't catch somebody's attention like within fifty seconds on something on the internet, yeah. they're not interested. Yeah. So only we appreciate Texas music. It's too slow for the the average listener, man. Okay, I got one last question. After that, um, I want y'all to talk about what y'all got going on. All right. And then maybe y'all can freestyle. Whatever, y'all want. Um, Is it worse for your partner to cheat on you with the same sex or the opposite sex? Which one is worse? Oh, I'm going to say I'm going to say opposite sex for me. Really? Yeah. So you wouldn't opposite feel worse? Sex. Really? I would feel inadequate, obviously, either either or. But okay. it's like. So you uh, walk in, you see what see it with another man. Okay, of course, you feel a certain type of way, but. It's not worse if you walk in, you seen her with a, another woman. It's gonna traumatize me, but I I can deal with the woman more than man because penetration. You know, so yeah, far. it's like yeah, come on, man, that's 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 mine. Well, we got women in here. What do you, what about you? What do you think? What if you came in your man was with another man? Is that worse than seeing him with another woman? See, for women, it's different. That's what I'm saying. It is. It is. I want. That's what I want to know. What you? What, what is your thoughts on that? Secret. 
Let it out. It ain't a secret. What, was that happened before or something or what? <laughs> what would happen? What would happen if you came in, you caught your man with another man? Like, which one is worse first? Oh no, I want to know what would you do and which one is worse. You can come closer if you want. You can get on the mic. Okay, who just yeah, go ahead and say it from there. Um, I mean, if I came in like caught my man with another man, it would it would kind of freak me out because I was he would get freaked out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if, if I didn't know that was going on, it, it would have been like, where did I go wrong and not seeing that? You know, this I, man had homosexual tendencies. Yeah, man. Hmm. See now, but which one was worse though? Which one was worse? Would you rather that see man. what? Would you like, <laughs> not even would you rather see that, which one was worse? That sword fight is worse. Though. I got some too. <laughs> <laughs> The emotional connection, man. For me, I'm like it would be very hurtful to see another woman too because I'm I'm very. you're in tune with your the, the emotional no, attachment. Yeah, you're, yeah, like you're a loving very, person. Very like, mm-hmm. I don't want no man penetrating my wife. No, it's man, over. I don't know. I don't know what I, I think that is, man. I don't know. So why is it? Is that some type of double standard or something? Because why it's is very. It? No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, very a double to, standard. When we when I sat there and said to her, the man, y'all immediately was like, yes. In that same sex, that same yeah. sex. Uh, so it's all about That's what it is. Yeah, People it's the inside, it's that connection. You know, somebody's going inside your man. So is it worse if he's a top or a bottom? If you see your man with another man, it's like, what the hell? Like, yeah. that's, that's totally weird. Like, you know? To, and, to the norm. Yeah, and then of course, if you see one another woman, it's very painful because us women, we cherish our men. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's very painful that we're sharing that with right. another female. And with men, it's about our ego, bro. We right. don't want another man penetrating what's yours. It's all it's ego true. there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that was, it's something, something about to go down bad. Now, if it's two women, I'm going to be like, uh, who? Look, he's going to try to jump in the bed. I'm diving in. I just probably just sit back and watch for a little like, bit. I'm going to be like, damn, why didn't they know you like girls like that? <laughs> now, let me watch. That's what I'm doing. I'm freaky. Let y'all, me watch. Y'all real, you know what I'm saying, okay with this. I'm, I'm just still saying. done with you, but let me watch for uh, a little bit. <laughs> what do y'all got going on now? Speak on what you got, Troy. Um. Man, while we was doing the army, I was I was cutting yards, you know what I'm saying, paying my bills and stuff. And uh man, I just built I built like an empire, bro. Okay. Well, I need to know what the name of your business is, what it's, you do, uh, social Ford, media. Ford Landscape and Lawn Care. Okay. LLC. It's LLC. Um, I fully insured everything, man. I got like 10 employees. I cut schools. Um, I got almost 200 residential clients. So you do residential. Yes, sir. Do What's the prices? What's the prices looking like? I mean, it just depends. My average yard, like on the average size, like $40. Cut edge and blow front and yeah. back on a, on a bi-weekly basis. Yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. $35. Uh, we do hedges, tree trimming, mulching, zero skate. What about uh, cleaning uh, gutters and things like gutters, that? Gutters, uh, Christmas lights. Power Christmas washing? Lights, power washing. We do everything that has to do with the outside of your home, man, mm-hmm. really. And I'm also a real estate agent. I'm coming up on four years doing that. Uh, so I do a little wholesaling here, and that's what I've been doing. The first two years, I was like trying to get into real estate because I was trying to get out of the landscape business because I was tired of that sun for a while. But when I got into real estate, I started meeting these heavy hitters, and they were like, you got what business now? How much? How many clients you got? And you got this? That was like, man, real estate, you can be any of Yeah, but ain't, wouldn't that go hand in hand? It does. Okay. It does, but this is what they told me. They said, keep your license because it's just a little money to keep it active. Right. But go back, spend that time, build your landscape business to where you got fully leveraged and, and working to where now you got it, you're making enough money to pay your bills off of it, then you can come back to the real estate business. Right. And now, so that was three, three years ago, so now I'm almost there mm-hmm. to where I have the leverage now. I can get back into real estate. I have this business pumping, you know what I mean? And it's, everyone's getting paid good. I ain't trying to just put out numbers out there and stuff, but it's it's doing very well. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to do, it's hard to run. But if I didn't go through those days of selling CDs and ordering gotta, CDs and gotta, hustling, gotta, gotta, people, gotta pay the cost to be the boss, man. Why yeah. I can run this business. It's ingrained in it. Yeah. And pretty much with me, bro, I just, you know, still sticking to the, music thing man 
I went ahead and bossed up, started my own publishing, Mr. War Music Publishing through ASCAP. So what that entails is any music that I put out, nobody's screwing me over from here on out. You know what I mean? So what, what else can go up under that? Like, like the podcast go up under that? Podcast can definitely go up under that. Anything. Um, like the whole idea of it is if you can get that brand big enough, uh, somebody will pick it up. A theatrical company will pick it up. They'll use one of your songs. That's how that works. But for the meantime, in between time, that's my protection as an artist. Like mm-hmm. nobody can take my music. All my music's copyrighted. So it's like I started my own music company, but it's just publishing for my music. Like I told y'all, they wobble. He should still be getting the check. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. points. There's points when you yeah, talk about right. points. That made a data doesn't have him on there. Doesn't have me on there. Now you look up my music on ASCAP. Any song he done with me, he's on there. I'm on there. I've seen it. That song gets a hit. He's gonna get a check. Yeah. That's how that works, bro. And and I right and I do want to say that any artist listening to this, or any artist that catch what we talking about, I'm always willing to drop jewels and talk to a serious artist about anything that they need the to OG know. Yes, now. because and that's what they call us. Dope ass artists. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll tell you something. That I'm standing you. behind one right now. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. I want to. Are y'all charging there. for features? Depends the situation. I I don't really. Honestly, don't charge for features. I'd rather do the whole back end thing. Mm-hmm. And what that means is if we got a dope record that it's gonna be a hit, let's go ahead and pull the split sheet out. That's you know thing. what I mean? Yeah, we're gonna do features. Like, let's hits. do that. Because we can write some dope music. Matter right. of fact, High Strong is on the record that I'm on. Yeah. I'm about to put all the information in. He bought the he bought the, you know, like I said, Triple B, you can pull up any song I've worked with any artist, and I only want to work with artists who got their stuff together because we write a dope record. So why it takes you, why you work with High Strong here? Because High Strong was an artist that kind of embraced. He he pays homage to what we've done. He the one who came to you. Well, he was one of the ones that came to us. Yeah, and, you know. What's good, man? I'm High Strong. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty self-explanatory, like he was saying earlier, man. You know what I'm saying? I support them 100. percent When I moved here from Colleen, I was getting into some of the same stuff they were talking about. You know what I mean? I was hanging out. I still hang out with those guys, too. I say what's up. Um, but when I moved out here, you know what I'm saying? It, only thing I heard on the music scene, I had heard stuff from Houston, Dallas. And, uh, you know, like I said, I was fortunate to have my pops that I have. And he told me, if you want to, you know what I'm saying, not be in the things that you in, you're going to have to move out this city. You're going to have right. to, and you have to bigger, make a bigger name because Colleen ain't it. You could shout loud as you want here, but it's only going to be Colleen that's messing with you. So I moved to San Antonio when I got here. There was no major artist like a T.I. or something to come out of here, you know what I'm saying? So it was all I heard was Question, Kylie, and 15.5. And everywhere that I would go in the clubs, this 15.5 group uh, would be, you know what I'm saying? There was a club called Bar 11. There was a club, you know what I mean, right across the street from North Star at the time. It was was just crazy. And um, you know what I'm saying? Um, I remember my partner, Sean, he was a big fan of – 15.5 Fifteen five and Sosa. He would go down to the to the Eisenhower swap meet and buy their mixtapes all the time. Man. Like he had this dude's probably still got the collection. That's of CDs, dope, you know man. What I'm saying, and um, he would come home and be like, "Yo, fifteen five, they gonna be in the spot. You already know, dog." Like he, for, this dude thought I was better than Jay Z when I was like nineteen. You know what I'm saying? He That's the kind of friends you need much. too. <laughs> and um, so he was like, "Man, you just as good. We need to go out there and they be buying bottles. They be doing this and they be doing that." And um. I had originally met Blackout from the group first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really know him, but every time I seen him, it was kind of love. And then I yeah. met JT uh, yeah. at the time, too. And then... Um, Blackout always co-signed you, too, and by there the was way. A, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Can you see me? <laughs> Am I in there? Where, where is it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. But nah, so like I went to, uh, I would go to bar 11, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we would just uh, chop it up and I would just hang around where they was at. Like he said earlier, people would just hang around and benefit off of, you know, what they was doing. And, and we it was, was always we was some love, of them cats. I admit that we were some <laughs> of them cats, you know what I'm saying? But but at the time we was going through the same stuff they was going through, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it was, it, we wasn't as large as a group, you know what I'm saying? I never made it to the birdhouse, you know what I'm saying? But I lived not too far from it. And I would yeah. always hear about these crazy parties. Never made it inside. You know what I'm saying? But I was definitely around <laughs> during those party times. So did you get some, some pussy off their cloth too or what? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. 
Yeah, see, like, we got another one confirmed. That's man. like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm not even going to cap. Like, that was, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I, it wasn't like, I didn't really go around like, oh, I was 15. Five. I would, like, they yeah. I would, I would make up those. Yeah. But like, yeah, I would have pictures where they, that was shown in the club yeah. where maybe Trip might have been walking by me yeah. and maybe T might have been walking by me and shook my hand. And I was like, they was like, damn, you know them? I'm like, yeah, bro, they yeah. always giving me props. And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was cool because, you know what I'm saying? And then I had remember seeing them too. I went to SAC. I remember going to SAC and I would see him. I went and, to SAC. And yeah, and I would see, and in our class, our math class would come out at the same time. And I would see 15.5 and a lot of them would be down, damn, downstairs. Damn, I remember that. Damn, Wait, college yeah, days, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would walk out. I timed it. I walk oh, out the same man. time they was walking out and be like, they be like, oh, y'all 15 five? Like, yeah, we just out here. You know what I'm saying? Chill. College days. Man, it's crazy. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It was like, it was, it's a lot of history behind it. You know what I'm saying? A beat? If you got one, whatever. If you. Okay. Okay. Nice. What kind of beat you looking for? What kind of what, what y'all want? It's whatever, man. I ain't freestyling so long. <laughs> <laughs> it don't go nowhere though. Put them on blast, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find something good. Maybe I can find something that that's known. You know what I'm saying? Some baby or you know, the baby or something. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, shit, the baby. Yeah, I was about to put on some Nipsey Hustle. Hold on. The baby. Ooh. What was your social medias, bro? On, on your business. Uh, I mean, oh, Ford Landscape and Lawn Care. Okay. That's all you got to do. Oh, F O R D is yeah. easy. Ford Landscape and Lawn Care. Yeah. That's my last name. Ford. And where can they find you at? Everything, man. T Crazy. K T K R A Z I E, man. So I can find you on Spotify. On music. Spotify right now. You can pull it up. T Crazy. T Crazy. T Crazy. I got a couple Twitter. of on Spotify. On the yeah. Triple B. Yeah, you do. Look it up. Yeah, he, you got it. He going to do a little dispute. Somebody else got his name right Somebody now, got too. My name, man. So. My record, my record. Yeah, my like I wasn't, see, I wasn't even able to put a lot of songs up because it would show up with that other dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool. We can have some fun. Let's freestyle a little bit, man. You're going first. So you're the right that's cool. We we'll go first. We gonna have some fun with it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Listen. Imagine me giving a fuck about making a rapper list. I'd rather be in the studio trying to crack out a hit. Look, me and my wife just living on a vacation in the Bahamas. I'm on my Mary J shit, living with no drama. I'm trying to get this bread up, period. Commas. See them niggas come around and they be talking trauma. That nigga like me, like 03. You remember me back in the day? Used to wrecking that band shit. Everybody know what the shit that I say? Look, talking down in that game ain't really about that. Hey, they calling me legend, my nigga. Look, I'ma be about that. Uh, look, me and Triple B, man, we some OGs. Hey, been back in the game, been doing this shit since 03. Like, look, look if you know me. Hey, so when you see me, like Chuck a Deuce, and I'm about that shit. I ain't really be out that shit. Yeah. It's been a while since I freestyled and I'm coming down. Hey, that text flew and it's something I ain't going to come around. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Chuck. Doing this since 03. Who is we? OGs. Everything that you seen, we done did on the scene. Looking clean like a desert team, shining like a diamond. It ain't nothing to me freestyling. Did it in a minute, but I'm rhyming. I'm coming down. Uh, that's that text flow that you was rapping about, but they don't really want it with your boy right now because I'm coming out my mouth and I'm from the south. Look, huh? It ain't nothing, dog. Niggas really don't understand. I done cut grass and I done turned that whole shit to a hundred grand. Yeah. Now I got like 10 employees, dog, and they eat too. Yeah. And they all got family, dog, and they plate and they table full of food. Yeah. Man, I'm surviving, dog. As a matter of fact, I'm winning, dog. They don't really want it with your boy. Put me up on a pit of stool and a pendant, dog. On your motherfucking shirt. <laughs> I don't care. I'm putting work. They don't want it with me, dog, thinking that hip hop dead. I done did the dirt. They don't really want to with your boy because I'm out here. I might lift the shirt. Got the heater on me, but it ain't for yeah. no drama, dog. Hey. We used to wreck the club, they was showing love, and that niggas they going to push a shove, but you probably mad at me, dog. Cause I done fucked the chick and she the rock scrub, yeah. <laughs> See, crazy, baby, they know the name. See me gone when I'm in the game. Re recognition, that's the thing. Lifelong ambition was the last project I dropped. Them niggas looking at me, they talking down like I done flop. I done sat back and got my bread up, and I done built a crib out of sit below. Man, 
shout out to my wife and shit. That's thing that gonna really go. Got two cars and they paid off. Man, this shit ain't got a flaw. It's got diamonds on my wrist. This ain't no cute it's crony as shit. This uh them point diamonds, quarters all in my wrist. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit, look, quarter diamonds. It ain't nothing, dog. When I come rhyming, be cut off. But you already know I'm a yeah, big man. <laughs> Shout out to the one radio, radio. man. Yo, that was fun. Yo, I sure you do appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. Straight up. I had y'all here for almost two hours. Yeah, y'all probably, probably like my family looking for we me. Definitely <laughs> went over time. Yo, y'all. This is radioactive, y'all. Yeah. Peace. Yo, y'all have fun? Yeah. Yes, sir. That was really real and 